All right. So I'll just start this off. Um, this is going to be a full, basically room by room tutorial of any percent, no major glitches. Um, I'm going to try to cover basically everything, any alternate routes, any tricks that I, even if I don't do them or if they're slower, I'll briefly mention the slower strats um, or the backups for stuff, but I'm not going to go fully into them. It's mostly just going to be... It's, I guess it's mostly aimed at somebody that's like already on the board and wanted to move up. If you're like in the top, you know, 40 and you wanted to get in the top 20 or something along those lines. Like, this won't be like a super beginner guide. I won't go way too in depth or whatever. But I have debug on um, so I can basically no clip or give myself infinite soul or whatever. So just so I can show tricks um, or show anything. It makes it easier. But obviously you can't have debug on for a run. So right off the start, um, as soon as it lets you, you want to just be spamming start right here. And you want to get into the menu. And then you either want to close it or hit continue, either one, um, as fast as you can. Uh, and this gives you control of the character. Um, and then you want to do what's an inventory, what's called an inventory drop, which basically is used throughout the entire run. And if you cancel it too early or too late, you could hard fall and hit the ground which will make you sit there for three or four seconds or however long it is. So in these doors, you want to up slash them um, so you don't get knocked back at all. The, the whole point, especially when you don't have dash or anything, is to just constantly be moving in the direction you want to go. I'm going to poke that thing so you can get up here. And then this guy can either be close or far. If he's close, it, mostly it's like if he's facing you. Then you want to jump off and do this to get his attention, and then you want to pogo up there. If he's far, you have to kind of walk off, get his attention, and then jump back up, and it's slightly slower. But it's RNG whether he's close or not. So this has been asked a thousand times, and that's why this fall right here sometimes hard falls and sometimes soft falls. And no one really has a 100% consistent method for it. Everyone has their own little tricks or methods that they use that sometimes work um, and you just kind of get it sometimes sometimes you don't but I jump on that thing and then hold down didn't work <laughs> so uh, here it doesn't really matter what you do from here as long as you use inventory drop to cancel the hard fall. And then I start jumping here, but as long as you start jumping before, I think it's that second one in the background. Um, basically, Dirt Math is going to make you walk slowly like this, but if you're in the air, it doesn't. So you want to try to stay off the ground as much as possible. Nothing really in this room. Especially, like I said, before dash, the main thing you want to do is just make sure you're always moving in the right direction. So here, this room is really RNG. Uh, what you're going to try to do is inventory drop. I use this, this line right here. I just to the left of it. Um, basically, where like almost half your body is on the line. <clears throat> and that allows you to, to inventory drop straight to the, the bottom, but the grezzers that fly around are RNG, so sometimes you'll get hit by them, sometimes you won't. I actually went too far left, but it ended up working out. This room, um, matter. So you want to try, to, uh, this, this first aspect can actually be in a couple different spots. Um, and if he's really, really high, then you'll actually pogo him and you'll get like kind of stuck to the platform above him for a half second. So you got to kind of delay your second nail or you'll fall into him. Um, but the point is just to kill him as fast as possible and then the second two uh you want to try to kill him in four hits total because the first hit you're only gonna be able to hit one of them and then you double hit double hit and then finish off the, the last one but you can also hit the stalactite that falls i'll actually i'll try it um no one really goes for it in nmg as far as i know but oops, okay well that's not a good start but it's really difficult on one two two one I missed. 
Oh, no clip out of the room, just so I can show what the arena is supposed to look like. There you go. You want to try to kill him in four hits. Um, like I said, that stalactite can actually kill both of them. It's just, it's kind of difficult. It's actually easier on current patch. Oh, I'm just blindly walking. Okay, so this room is actually kind of based on a cycle, and I use the environment to kind of show where to jump and whatnot. So, I mean, this is just the first gap, and then as soon as you hit this bush, like the very start of it, I jump and I hit the edge of this, and then I jump just enough to barely clear the first gome, and I'll show you why. It actually, it sets up the cycle to work out perfectly. <laughs> I unpaused and then I didn't jump fast enough, so I'll show you what I mean. But this allows you to basically, the whole point of this room is to never stop holding right. That, and you poke off him, and then him, you have to decide where he's at. You have to decide whether you're going to go under him and pogo the spikes, or if you're going to pogo on top of him. But the bad part about pogoing on top of him, somehow, sometimes you'll barely miss the sledge and you'll do that. And you'll like barely land and then you waste like, I don't know, third of a second or something. Something small. This room is nothing. Just make sure you're always holding right. And then you want to obviously try to get to the very edge of that, which I did it too small, but you want to basically so you can instantly jump up. So this room is interesting because there are two ways to do it. Um, I'll come up here and show you real quick. That way. So basically, you can jump up and you can pogo the crawler right when he's here to make it up there. Or you can do what's called a statue pogo, which is that. I did it wrong. But um, to get up there basically instantly. Saves a minimal amount of time, but that's statue pogo. It's kind of difficult to set up um, if you're not used to it. First half of this room is basically nothing, and then, so, there's a glitch that can happen in this room where, first off, getting past this guy is sometimes annoying if he's too far forward, um, but there's a jumping guy, and when he jumps and he hits the ceiling, if you're on your way upwards from a jump, sometimes it can just stop your upwards momentum, it'll just make you start going down. So if you're trying to jump over one of these guys, the guys on the ground, and he hits the ceiling at the same time, you'll fall into the other one. So it's hard to unpause and play. So normally I just don't let him get to the ceiling and I go over him like that. But if like, for example, this, I would just jump in between them. <laughs> of course I mess up whenever I see it, but I would just jump in between them, let him jump over me. If you don't have to jump as he's gonna hit the ground or hit the ceiling, then you can just let him, it's whatever. So False Knight, basically just uh, trying to get your hits in as quick as possible. He can do three possible jumps. He can jump over you, which is the fastest. He can jump slightly backwards, or he can jump really far backwards, which is the worst. All right, that's good. Because then you can just basically keep hitting him, and he dies. And you only have to go through the first phase, because you can break the wall behind him. I would try to grab this Geo if I could. Yeah. So after his last mace hit... You can instantly start breaking the ceiling, and you can leave. It's after eight mace swings. As soon as the eighth one hits, you can start swinging. So basically, you just want to try to cut these as close as possible. That. And then I use, I use analog stick normally. Oh, I should have had my controller display on. I think that would actually be a good idea. Oh, well, too late. Um, I use analog stick normally, and so I claw and press up on the directional pad as soon as it lets me. Um, you can do that with a lot of interactions, and it works out really well. I'm going to mash as quickly as possible, and then you want to try to jump as soon as it lets you. So you can basically just jump diagonal straight into it. So... The mound is pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, especially in the beginning when you don't have any any movement upgrades, it's basically all about um, it's about cutting your jumps as close to like as close as you can to not waste any time going the wrong direction. The 
this one you gotta kind of stop holding right so this guy what i do is i jump and i jump off of this and then i pogo the the I don't know their name the little balder i guess i mean they're balder um and basically that lets me get enough height to where there's two planks over there and i want to break them both on the way down if that makes sense so, so that I don't have to stop. Like basically one nail swing breaks them both and I never stop going downwards. So I'll show you what I mean. If I get it. Yeah, like that. Jump over him and then you can just upswing him to go under. This guy can kind of be in an annoying spot, but it, it never doesn't work. So in case you don't know, this is the Ancient Balder or Elder Balder? Ancient Balder? I don't remember. Um, but... He can either shoot one of the tiny balders or he can shoot a little orange spit. And basically it takes four fireballs to kill him. So you have to fireball three times and then wait for him to give you a balder, get three hits off of him, and then uh, fire again. I'm basically going to be referring to the soul as a one or as a zero through nine um, because it takes nine nail hits to fill up and um, it takes three out of nine to, uh, to shoot a fireball or to heal. So... If you're at 9 and a 9 right now, you shoot 3 fireballs, go 0, 3 hits, and then you're at 3. So, um, basically, what you want to do is I shoot 2, and then as that one's in the air, I use that time to, sh uh, to shoot 3rd, get the 3 hits as fast as possible, and then shoot another one. He gave me first spit right there, which is really lucky. It's 50-50 on every spit he does, whether it's going to be a boulder or a, or a spit. Um... When you go through that ancient mound, it automatically places your bench at that bench right there. So you don't have to bench if you're at full health. Because um, obviously it's slower, but <clears throat> it's that bench is basically the most important in the whole run. You're going to save quit to it two times. Um, I guess I'll quickly go over this. I try to jump right whenever my character is past that piece of paper. Because a full jump will land you. Basically, you want to land like at the very corner so that you can just instantly go up. And that's the fastest you can get to that room as far as I know. All right, so this room is really important because you need six nail hits, but you really need need five if you get really lucky. Um, but you need, like, if you don't get lucky, you need six. So you need one fireball to kill the ancient boulder, and I'll explain why it only takes one fireball in a second, but then you need another one for a fireball skip, which saves three seconds. So um, you want to try to get six hits, and there are two crawlids slash tick ticks. The tick ticks are the white ones, the crawlids are the blue ones, that... I get three hits on each, or I'm sorry, uh, two hits on each. So that means, and they're always in the same spot, but the Gruzzers are random. So I'm always gonna get the same four hits, but then I need two more on Gruzzers. He's kinda out of the way. That one's, I'd get one on him. And then this guy's always here. And if no Gruzzers are there, then you can get one or two on him. And that's worst case scenario, is you'll get the two on that guy above you, but it wastes a second or two. All right, so basically for this guy, there's a weird glitch that only works on the, one two two one, the patchy be running on, where I'm gonna walk right to this pole that I'm right on top of, and then immediately turn that like it makes him wake up. And you immediately turn around, and I go right off of this little hump, and I turn around about right here and fireball, and I'll wait basically just half a second, which will make the fireball hit him four times. I waited kind of long, but it'll make the the fireball hit him four times. It immediately kills him. So this is the first fireball skip. This is why you need. Um, a third soul after killing him. Um, which is why if you had five and he gave you a first spit, you could hit that thing once and then have six, so you get lucky, but I don't ever really take that chance. So, fireball skips are pretty simple. You just jump as far as you can. For this one specifically, I try to wait as long as possible because if you let yourself fall from the apex of your jump quite a bit and then do the fireball skip, it actually makes it easier. So you want to jump as late as you can off of this platform. And then you're going to turn around and fireball, like, one frame after. Like, as fast as you can. That way, that's how you do it. So, basically, what you do is that. And failing it doesn't really have any consequences, because you'll just land on this. And then you're here. It wastes about, about three seconds, as far as I know. I don't think I've timed it myself, but... But there are a bunch of elements where, like, the later that you jump on here, the more frame perfectly that you fireball, um, like, turn around fireball, um, 
So like if you get an early jump on here, you can still do it, but it makes the rest of it have to be tighter. Whereas if you get a really <laughs> if you get a really late jump, um, then it makes you know you don't have to do the rest of it as I didn't turn around. Whoops. Uh, makes the rest of it easier if that makes sense. I'm also fireballing kind of early. When you do it really late, it makes it really easy. He for some reason had full soul when coming into this room. You could do one on the balder, and then you could double fireball here and make it super free. But um, yeah. So the point of this room in the run is to get seven hits without slowing down as much as possible. So this guy is actually in a really good spot to do something that I like to do, which is that it's kind of difficult, but basically I don't have to stop holding left at all. You want to have your first nail like hit the very front of him, and you can get a second one off and still clear this gap. It's kind of risky because obviously if you do it wrong, then you'll fall into that gap, and that gap is you have to go all the way around. Um, but most of the time what I do is I do this, and then I land it and I immediately get like a turnaround hit if he's in the wrong spot. But he's in a really weird spot for where he'd be. All right, so he normally be about there. I normally get three on him. And then that. I just pogo once and get a quick turnaround hit. Um, and that's that room, like I said, I normally go for 2-3-2 two, two, unless I come into this room with extra soul, which is, you know, easily possible. But uh, that's normally how I do I get 2-3-2. Two, two. So the reason you want seven hits is because the last two are going to come from these two birds. You basically don't have to slow down at all. You can just jump and slash through the platform and hit both. If you don't have seven hits, it's not like essential to have nine leaving this room. You do have to have six, unless you're a madman. You could have three and go for a single fireball, but I'll show that in a second. But it is possible to hit a couple of these birds if you don't mess it up like that. You do that. You waste a little bit of time by like hitting the front of this platform, but you'll do that. You'll hit at least one or two of the birds, and then you can hit them. So you can get a good amount of hits in that room if you absolutely need it. All right, so this is the second fireball skip. Um, this one's pretty lenient, actually. You can do it with one fireball, but you come in here with full soul, and two fireball makes it pretty free. You can one fireball it, but it's more difficult. Oh, I don't have soul. Uh, there we go. You gotta basically get a super late jump and a really, really, really tight turnaround there, like that. It's way more difficult. But two fireball makes it pretty free. With a little bit of practice. Is there no game sound? Why is there no, what? Wait, why is there no game sound? Oh. No, dude. That's dumb. Then that makes it to where my alerts are gonna play and I can't turn them off. Okay, then here, I'll just do this for now. Needs that redo. I'll just turn the, I'll just take the audio off the alerts. Cause like I turn the actual alert off, but the, the audio is still gonna play. So here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most likely. I'm just turning the audio off. The alert. Oh, almost done. Come on. What's up, Shady? Wait. Why is that one so much louder? Okay. Cool. Oh, it's done. Alright, so now the alerts won't play. So anyways. Um. Yeah. Basically, two fireball makes it pretty free, and then you would have you would have one third soul leaving this room. If you don't get the fireball skip, normally if I miss the two fireball, then I'll go for a single. If I miss it, you can always do the backup, which is this guy. So you want to jump on that. It's really slow, but you do that. Basically, you want to like jump to this platform without him dashing, get him right here, and then kind of jump because you want him to to dash at you and hit the bottom of that. So you can easily just boop and get up there. So yeah, you'd have one third soul here. So <sighs> <you> <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. 
Um, the point of this room is to get... I try to get four hits if I can. Um, I'll tell you what to do if you get three or four hits, depending on how nice these um, mosquitoes are. Sometimes it can be pretty rude. That was pretty decent. So that means you only need one on him, but sometimes you can do that. And you're not going to turn around all the way to get that second hit. So, I'm going to kill him to get him out of the way. Um, this is the third fireball skip in the last one. So, normally you would have, um, let's say you had six hit, like you got, uh, you got three hits in that room. So, you'd have six out of nine, right? Which gives you just enough to do two fireball skips. I pressed it, but it didn't go off. <laughs> I mean, two fireballs, one fireball skip. Um, this one is also, like all the other ones, is possible with one fireball, but it's more difficult. Um, whoops. If you hit your... Okay, so you want to jump lo uh, late enough on this platform to where you don't hit your head on that. And it looks tight. It kind of is, but... Damn it. Uh, with a lot of practice, you can get it pretty consistent. If you miss that, uh, basically you can get you can get two hits on this guy, um, and then you can get three hits on that, which gives you uh, at least four hits. So that would be six. So yeah, if you if you came in this room with exactly six hits and you wasted two fireballs missing that, then you could hit this thing three times and hit this guy twice, and you would have enough for two fireballs. So yeah, you would come in this room with six out of nine. Damn it. <laughs> and you would fireball skip. And then you'd have zero. Now, if you got four hits in the room before, then I don't do this. But because I only got three, then the way I do it is you're gonna have to come up here to get this geo. I'm gonna try to hit both with all of your nail hits. And then since I, I get one hit on him, if I get four in the previous room, then I only I, I just don't turn around for that hit on him. And this will all be important in a second. So, depending on where these guys are, you can go over them. Sometimes the roof right here is a little bit lower than it is right here. So, it's sometimes kind of difficult or tight to get the pogo over him if he's there. If they're both stacked up right here, then it's kind of worth to just two forward and then one up slash and then just jump. And you'll have a bunch of extra soul, which is nice. So, I come into this room, I hit him once. I try to hit this guy twice. I'm really bad at dodging that for some reason. If I didn't hit him twice, I hit him twice, and then I hit him once. Now, the point is to come up with, up into this room with at least eight out of nine, right? So if you hit those two last guys, uh, and two rims ago, you like hit him forward, forward, up, then that's six whole hits. You barely have to get anything in that room. So you would have, you, the whole point is to have eight to nine out of nine at, coming into this room. Because this guy dies with one nail hit and three fireballs. You're gonna as soon as he spawns, you have to you have to swing close enough to get him to spawn on this patch. On an earlier patch, I think he, I think you could just fireball immediately and he would stand up. But in this patch, you have to swing, and the whole point is to have him stand up. And then as soon as he stands up, you're gonna nail and then fireball three times. He's instantly gonna die. So that's why you can come up here with eight out of nine because you're gonna get the ninth hit on him regardless, and he just dies. Um, if you come up here with nine, it's not a big deal. Again, these these jumps are just cutting him as close as possible without bonking or whatever so in this room so there's these two guys right i always hit him twice and then i hit him twice and if he's coming to this direction when i walk up to the spot that means he's going to be going left when i get to him which means i can just pogo him without ever letting go of left and it's faster so i would do that and then you can just ride along with him i get one hit on each of these basically like i said the whole point is to never stop holding left so that you're not wasting any time. If you absolutely have to, you can like hit and then turn around and do that and you'll waste a little bit of time. Now, some people get nine hits in that room because they don't want to do this trick. I like this trick, I think it's fun. And uh, I think, I mean, it's obviously faster because you don't have to slow down at all. So there's a charger, that's a moss charger that's gonna come at you right here. Basically right before he hits you, you're gonna up slash and then it's going to make the little guy appear, and you can upslash again, and you never have to stop holding left, and you can get the hit on him without getting hit, and it's pretty nice. And then, of course, I fuck it up. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Whoa, whoa, I, like, stopped. What? That was interesting. There we go. That's how it's supposed to look. 
So, just in case I like try to show something and die, I'm gonna put a dream gate here just so I don't have to walk all the way back because that would be really annoying. Okay. So the whole point of getting all those hits is to have full soul coming into Hornet because you're gonna fireball three times immediately and um, it's just gonna do 60 damage. Oh, sorry, uh, 45 damage, I'm done. So the fireball right now does 15 damage and the nail does five. Um, and the nail's gonna do five for the whole run unless you get nail one, which is a whole different thing. But um, we're not gonna, like I'm not, you, you don't normally upgrade the nail if you do the, the correct strats. So anyways, um, the nail or the fireball does 15 until we get shaman stone a little bit later and that makes it do 20 and increases the hitbox. So anyways, you're gonna come here, you're gonna drop down, you're gonna spam through a text and then you're gonna walk to the, I walk to this little, I can't really see because it it's dark right now, but I walk to this little boulder thing that she's standing in front of. She's going to dash backwards. And I stand right on top of that and I triple fireball and then I, like, see with the fight from there. Whoops. So, I tried to get it off, but I didn't. So, she has a stagger and it happens the first time after six hits and then every other time after that it's five hits. If I would have done that correctly, which I didn't, you can triple fireball, get one hit as she jumps over you, and then get two hits right before that little like needle whip thing starts. And you can actually not get hit at all, and you can get her to her first stagger before that goes off. But it's kind of tight, and I, I did it slowly, so that's why I got hit. So basically the whole point of this fight now, what I try to do is I try to get her to the corner, and then you can get a damage rotation on her with four nail hits and a fireball, and just stagger her over and over. That's a stagger. Now she's in the corner, and if she jumped, no, see, that's perfect. So right there, when you get your your first nail hit, and you jump, hit her again, and then you kind of back up a little bit, she can either jump, like, straight up like she did, which is perfect. I want that every time, but sometimes she can do a really, really sharp angle jump and go across, and you have to kind of react to that um, and make sure you don't get hit. But she, like, if she jumps the way she did just now, that's perfect. I, you can just keep her in a loop. See, now she, her jumps are starting to get more. Oh, well, that, that one was good. And then it's a fight. Um, I'll respawn her. Just, whoops. Um, just because it's debug mode, after you die to her once, um, which is the game thinks I died and came back, uh, her text isn't going to show up again, but basically you would drop down and do the text and then do a fireball. It kind of throws off the beginning, like, because that can happen. Oh, that, I think that fireball just double hit. That's nice. Sometimes if, if your fireball hits her in a certain way and it knocks her backwards, they kind of sit on top of each other. And that happens a lot with other bosses. Um, it's really, it's harder with this boss, especially because you don't have Shaman Stone yet. So your fireball hitbox isn't very big. But uh, she's in the corner staggered now, which is perfect, which means I can do... Oh, see, that, that jump is super, super sharp. I knew she was one hit away from stagger, so I could just hit her once. Um, but that one was good it's when her jump is too sharp that you have to kind of react okay so that's that's a, i'm glad that she did that so normally she would have staggered right there after five hits but when she does this needle throw move it resets the counter so right before i got my fifth hit she threw the needle which made it to where she didn't stagger anymore so you have to you have to react to that and what i do is i hit her once and then jump over the needle hit fireball hit and then i jump over the needle again well pausing is <laughs> it makes me like it throws off the timing so it's hard but yeah, basically, and she did. It would, uh, but yeah, I'm glad I'm I'm glad she did the needle throw so I could show that it it turns off it resets the timer of her stagger. So yeah, it's six hits normally, or the six hits for the first one, and then five hits every time after that, unless she does the needle throw. Then you have to kind of start your counting over. Normally, you always get those two those three fireballs off in the beginning, on the first time you fight her because. She does like a little like stance when she first starts the fight, but because I'm coming in the room and her text isn't showing up because it's like a refight or whatever, um, she jumps before I can get my three fireballs off, so it kind of throws it off. Alright, so... That double hit, wow. This is like the most time I've ever got double hits. You want to try to minimize the amount of time you spend just having to walk across the arena. But at the same time, I don't like going down to zero. Um, 
zero soul at any point in the, the fight. Oh, why am I healing? Um, I, this is like a, a constant thing throughout almost every fight is you, like, it's kind of dangerous to go into zero soul unless you know for a fact you're about to get three or four hits. She's one hit away from staggering. I tried to get the nail out before it hit me, but it didn't. So if she's not in the corner, she seems to like, depending on where you are when she's staggered, if she's not in the corner, she almost never does the straight up jump. At least I, I don't see it very often. When she's in the corner, if you hit her from like max distance, that seems to make her want to do the sharp jump. If you hit her from when you're really close, she'll, she'll normally do like the straight up jump. She didn't right there, but. Sometimes you can kind of get stuck in a loop like this, whoops, where she won't give you the straight up jump and she'll do the, the angle jump way more. And you kind of just have to like hit her one straight up, like straight on and then jump and hit up and then turn around and hit and then fireball twice and like you can tag her again. But dagger. So another thing that this is like a big thing in almost every fight is ha like hitting her with full soul is kind of a waste because obviously you could be building soul during that spot. Now it's not as bad as like running out of soul when you need it, but it obviously like you could have had fireballs. So the way that, that the fireballs and nails work, nail works in this game is basically when you nail nail, you could fit a fireball in between those two nails and it, it wouldn't slow down the nail at all. So like basically that is always going to be the same. Of course I messed it up, but yeah, you can almost get the nail off at the same speed. So you can always fit a fireball in between the two nails, if that makes sense. All right. So once you kill her, she's going to drop the dash. She's going to bring up this text. You just have to kind of wait for it. And then once this is off screen, as soon as you're able to, you want to save quit. So when you quit in this game, it puts you back at the last binge, but when you quit, it automatically saves. So like, I'm gonna keep every bit of Geo, why is this happening? I'm gonna keep every bit of Geo I had. Um, I'm gonna keep like, any, you know, I just got the dash, I'm gonna have the dash, but it's gonna put me back at the bench. And we use that a lot in the run. There are some things that hard save you, make it to where you can't do that. Why is this happening? I don't want to have to close the game every time I save quit. This doesn't normally happen, like, ever. My debug's being weird today. It's really weird. It happened to me earlier. I wasn't sure why. I might re-download re debug later. I think I messed something up whenever I downloaded. Oh, I need my drink. Oh, of course. I'm going to grab it. Hold on. Very professional video. Okay. Now, when you save quit, you're gonna go back to the ancient mound. Now you have dash. So the one thing about the dash is you can't control the distance. So it's always, no matter what happens, you're always gonna go the same distance unless you inventory. You can cut it short with an inventory. See? So basically, once I get out of this room, I use that a lot. You dash twice, and then you do that, and you inventory to cut it short. And then with this this part, once I get here, I dash. And basically, when you go around corners like this, you want to kind of jump to where you diagonally um, cut this and then cut that. So that basically, you're already moving left and falling at the same time. So like it kind of like you like round the corner if that makes sense. Oh, I should be dashing. Um, then dash twice again. And then basically it's just trying to minimize 
spots where you can't dash. All right, so for this room, um, I stop holding left, and as soon as I see that my character stopped, um, let me try to explain this well. So basically, I dash, and mid dash, I know it looks like there's not enough room, but I mid dash, I start holding left, and then I jump at the very edge, and it'll let you. Of course, I say that, and I don't get it, but basically, it's. So if you if you were like slow down, you can see I'm actually kind of jumping like right off the ledge, but it, it lets you get the dash or it lets you get the jump off. I see some people don't go for this, which it can be annoying when you miss it, but once you get the muscle memory down, I get it 90% of the time. Um, so yeah, I do this, and then I dash, dash, and then I dash a third time. But I need to show you. So there's this thing in the background, right? And there's this tiny little pebble, if that makes sense. You want to kind of be lined up to the left, just to the left of it. Like, basically where these two pebbles touch. You want to be right there lined up. And you can inventory drop straight to the bottom. I went way too far. It's hard to do, like... There we go. And then you just want to dash. And then I... Some people just, like, kind of fall in. I dash and then cut my dash short when I'm right. So that I fall straight in. Um... This room, I walk to the end of this platform. This room is actually way different for almost every runner. I see everybody do it differently. Um, so just as long as you basically get as many inventory drops in as you can when they're appropriate, it's only really worth it if it's like a far drop, which this one, it requires a lot of memorization and me muscle memory and just having the timing down because if I get, you want an inventory drop straight off of this tiny little ledge, but if you, just continue inventory dropping into the ground you're gonna fall on acid you have to stop it at a certain point and dash to the right so do this and that's what you want to have to avoid that acid so you dash once now if you do it perfectly or like better than i did you can actually land down here instead of up here because like the edge is like right here so there, there's a little gap where you can actually fall straight down into here but basically i walk off here I dash, dash, and then dash. Um, this, like I said, this room is really different for every runner. I've seen a, I've seen a lot of different ways to get down here, um, but I do get down here. Like I do get through this split basically one of the fastest. So I, I haven't personally timed everybody's different methods, but um, I think mine's pretty good. So this room. Um, Excluding the obvious Owen Wilson joke that everyone makes. The top of these shroom guys, like almost the entire shroom part, doesn't actually have a hitbox. So what you want to do, I try to get three hits in this room um, for something a little bit later. But what you want to do is you want to go up to them and then you're going to jump and immediately down slash and immediately dash. Because you're going to go through like the top half of them. That's way too high, but I'll show you with this guy. You can basically go through the whole top half of them. I'll show you. What, of course, he jumps. I'll show you what this room looks like uh, if I do it like without pausing. So, walk, dash, dash. Oh, I cut it too close. I actually never got hit by that. It's like I'm overthinking it because I'm trying to explain it, but there you go. And then I get a third hit on him, and you drop down. So. You have your three hits. You don't really need any more hits in here. If somehow you missed one, you can actually hit this balloon guy if you want. Um, it's not that big a deal. You can actually get the hit later if you really you really need it. So um, the way I do it this room is pretty simple. Also, honestly, most of this split is kind of done pretty differently for most runners. It's even the explosion pogo, a lot of people have different methods. I'll show you mine, um, but it just kind of goes with preference. So I do this room slightly differently, I think. Now, when I drop down here, I actually let myself get pretty low because once when you're falling, you increase your speed over time. So like you start falling faster and faster. So I let myself get pretty low and then I dash to where I barely clip the ledge, like the ledge right here, and I walk off and dash. Um, this room is just dash across. If you get your dashes timed well, you can actually do that. But I never really risk it because one of my dashes could have been late. So I just jump just to make sure because I've had times where I got the dashes off late and I 
accidentally dashed into the acid there. So, oops. when you come to this room, you're gonna dash, dash, pogo, pogo, dash, pogo, dash, pogo, dash, pogo. That's it. Um, then, whenever I hit here, I kind of, I want to get around this corner thing. So I do that and I dash and basically, <laughs> I was gonna hit there. I'm gonna dash and then I'm gonna start kind of start hitting right as I'm falling and you want to be about right there when you inventory drop because then you'll oh no farther all right there I thought it was I, I normally actually go for about in the middle or right here but um sometimes I overshoot it so yeah you're gonna do that and then I cut it out short with the inventory all right so these when you come in this room you need to kill these two guys and get these two um geo rocks and this guy can be in two spots. He can either be exactly where he's right now, walking to the right, which is good. Um, that's what you want. Or he can be literally about right here and walking this way, which is annoying. But if he is, you want to slightly step off this, fall right in front of him, and nail fireball. And then I'll kind of like separate you a little bit so that you can get the fireball off. It'll hit both. The point is that you want the first fireball to hit both of these guys. And it also hits as the first hit on the Georox. So you don't have to hit the Georox as much. But if they're over here, you can literally just dash off. And I just fireball. You can get a nail it if you want, but... So those Georox need one less hit because you hit them with the fireball. So I drop down here, just pogo off the mushrooms and... Whoops. Go around. And you're going to go right here. So this is the explosion pogo. Um... Can go around if you absolutely can't get it, but on 1221, it's pretty decent. They patched out being able to uh, pug on the explosion, which is annoying. Um, on current patch, you can still do it, but it's 10 times harder. So I'll show you my way of doing this, but everybody has a different way. There's actually a way to damage tank to get more height, and it, it helps some runners um, get this more easily. I've never learned it. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, so I just do the explosion my, uh, without being hit. So what I do is I dash off. And I drop to basically the very left side of this platform, right? To get him to start shooting the explosion, which um, I'm about to do. Once I get here, then I walk off. And there's this block thing. It's kind of how I line myself up with the very center of it. So I just walk off and you'll kind of like hit this wall and then I'll drop right here. Now, I'm gonna let the explosion go off for a second so I can show you. Okay, so. A little bit lighter on my stream so you can kind of see it but right here there's three like mushrooms in the background and right where the dark spot is in the middle i, I think most runners use this as a, a reference point um right when the, the the spore gets to that spot is when i i jump right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna jump pogo and right after the pogo i'm gonna start moving left but when I do the second pogo, I stop holding left. You're gonna hold down the whole time, but I'm basically just gonna pogo, move left, and then pogo again. And that allows me to like, basically go straight up, diagonal, straight up. Because you wanna be, like, if I if you keep going diagonal, you actually won't get enough height and you'll hit the, the ledge. So if I, I go straight up, then diagonal, and then go straight up again to get enough height so I can dash over. So I'll show you what it would look like. I drop to this, I do this. Of course, I messed it up. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's different for everybody. Don't want to die and have to walk all the way back here. That'd be annoying. Oh. When you come in the room, um, it like, takes a second to... Kind of is a little sloppy, but... Gets the job done. There you go. Um, some people I've seen I've seen everything. Um, as far as people do, it. some people do like I know I've seen somebody do this where they just dash into that, and then they somehow do it. I don't even know how that works. Uh, I've seen people do that and then do this, and they like. I don't know. It's different for everybody. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, but just kind of find what works for you. Um, the majority of the time, do it. I cleared that by a lot. That was actually decent. Okay. So, uh, you would come into this room with zero soul, normally. 
unless you hit that guy up there, then you'll have one. But um, this guy can kind of be to the left or the right. He's on a pretty fast cycle, and it's random. So basically, I go up here. I pogo him once, which I missed both. <laughs> they were in weird spots because I let them move around too much before I started the room. But um, as soon as you come in here, you I want I try to get a hit on both. This is good. And then you want to go to the very... Like, basically hit this wall and inventory drop. And you can come straight down here, and then you dash over. So I'm going to set a dream gate here just in case I mess this up. Um, so this is the Mantis Pogo. There's a way to two Mantis it, um, which the video is like in the Discord, but I actually, I don't do the, the two Mantis. I'm not really good at it. Um, I haven't practiced it really. Or at least not really, like, fully practice it. Um, so I do three Mantis. It's a little bit easier. Um, it can actually kind of screw you because... The mantises can kind of get in each other's way, <laughs> um, but I don't know. It, it's just it gives you a little bit more room for backup if you miss uh, the three ma three mantis. So I'll show you three mantis. Um, come down here, go to the edge, and then you dash over, and then you can either hit him first and then fireball. But like I don't know. I I just dash to him, jump over. Hit this lever, turn around, nail to get to, you know, enough soul because I didn't have it before I started, and then fireball. Now, this guy can do one of two things. He can either, uh, he can either dash backwards, or he can stand in the same spot and just, like, let you go over him. If he stands in the same spot and doesn't move, then after I fireball, to, like, all of my movements in this room are, are making these mantises move, like, how I want them to. So, if he stands still... I'm a little bit farther to the right than I normally would be. Which means I'm gonna... After I kill him, it, it kind of serves two purposes. I'm letting this Geo fall to the ground because I want it. Um, it's not always... like it, Sometimes it kind of bounces over you and it's whatever. It's not a, that big of a deal. But if he doesn't move, then I kind of stand still for a half second. And then I dash twice to get this third Mantis in the right spot. I'm probably gonna mess it up because I'm paused and it's... Like, I don't know. It's gonna be in a weird spot. But if he dashes backwards... As soon as I kill him, I start dashing because I want like I'm farther to the left than I want to be. So it's all about where this third man's is... actually the third man's might be off screen. I can't tell if that's the dead guy, but yeah, 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 he's off screen. Well, that was a weird way to do it, but it worked. Um, I'll, I'll kind of show you. Um, the big guy is not going to be there anymore, but I'll just pretend like he is, right? So. And the lever is going to be flipped. Ooh, see, the second man just hit the, the the third one hit the second one, which kind of messed him up. It like it kind of knocked him down a little bit. So, but the point is to get this third man just into the right spot and not have the other. I mean, these two when they kind of stick in this corner, it can actually be beneficial because if you mess up on him, you can kind of hit like the very head of one and get up. Um, but if you mess it up, you have to kind of reset them up like that. Um, it's not impossible. It's not even that hard to like get the backup if you do fix it. But um, and that's how you do it normally. Um, if you absolutely know you're not going to make it onto here. You can always go to the right side because it's lower and you can get the the mantis poke just over there and then you can just kind of kill these guys get them out of the way and dash over um it's not the end of the world so now we have mantis claw um obviously the movement like really opens up once you have the wall jump so you're gonna immediately save quit unfortunately it's probably gonna do that overlay thing again so i'm gonna have to close the game my debug is messed up I'm just not going to deal with it. I don't know why it's doing that. I downloaded Rando yesterday and I messed it up. Because I accidentally, I think, downloaded it to this folder. Okay. Now. So once you save quit, shouldn't have to close the game, but... Um, basically when you quit, 
because we use a loadless timer and it takes everyone different times to get back to the menu, the timer pauses until you're able to put in an input, right? Well, like right here, it kind of starts before you're able to, but it's basically when it would be consistent, you know. Um, so basically when you're in the menu, you want to spam either like clicking in the right spots or you want to spam like the X or A button or whatever, um, depending on Xbox or PlayStation controller, um, to where you get to press start game and then press the file as fast as possible so the timer doesn't move as, you know, or at least moves as little as possible. So this is going to be the last time we bench here, or we save quit to here. Again, getting out of this room is the same thing. But this is actually where, or the next room is where it paths diverge between Mantis Claw and going to Grez Mother. So right here, just want to try to never stop holding right and get as many dashes as you can. Now, I'm actually going to show how I do this room. Um, every Almost everything is important. Like when you dash, the amount of hits you get for soul, all of it is like planned out. So basically I do the same thing where I kind of let him stop so that I know I can get the dash in, into jump. Oops, I kind of messed up at the very end, but it's whatever. And then I went one hit on him. And that's basically just, you're trying to get as many dashes and never have to stop holding that direction. Oh, also, did I dash onto that platform? I actually don't know. I think I wasn't paying attention. Maybe I did it. Oh, I did, okay. So yeah, coming in this room, you just want to jump dash into, not that, but... And then dash into here. We're gonna open up the stack station for later. Um, for everything that needs like, like proper timing, like dashes and nail. Uh, actually, before I do this, I'll explain. Um, you want to try to. Um, you want to try to not spam like especially for the nail the nail like spamming the nail you'll never get it off as fast like you're always going to have little inconsistency so you want to try to time it perfectly the dash i spam the dash because i'm just i'm paranoid that like one of them is going to go off late or something um or i'm going to press it a hair too early and then i i won't already be pressing it again for the next one to go off if that makes sense so anyways right here i dash in inventory and then I close it to hit him once. So now I have three at a three at a nine, and you need six at a nine. So which means I'm gonna get three off this guy. Whoops. Normally I have forward, up, back, like go under him and whatever. <laughs> so the damage rotation for Grezmother is always the same. It's gonna be nail fireball, nail fireball, nail fireball, and then six nail hits. Shut up. Um. Th that rotation is specific because you're going to get three three fireballs, but you only have six out of out of nine. So you need those first three in between each fireball because that's the like best ro damage rotation you can do, um, putting the fireballs in between nails. And then the six fireballs to have six out of nine after the fight's over because that sixth one will kill it. And you need two fireballs to do it with one if you are like got really, really lucky. But two fireballs because you're going to try to kill all the gruzzers that she releases when she dies. In just two fireballs and that's the fastest way you can do it but um sometimes one or two will get away and you'll have to clean them up with your nail we'll, we'll see what happens with mine sometimes she goes up you want to try to poke her when she goes up uh, i didn't react to it fast enough actually here i'll show you Whoa, that's not the button i wanted luckily i have six souls so ends up working out if she comes straight at you, you can just up slash. But if she goes straight up, it takes too long to jump up. You don't want to walk into her, but... And that's what's supposed to happen if you don't walk into her like I did. If she goes up, then you want to uh, jump and pogo her so that you don't have to keep jumping from the ground and, and getting up slashes if it's, it's too slow. Pogoing is not that fast, but you are going to be like bouncing off the ceiling. That was basically perfect. Um, I start the fight pretty close to her. 
because I, for some reason, I think that it makes her come straight at me instead of going up. It just seems to work out that way more often than not. All right, so um, she's gonna release all the grudgers, and you wanna try to jump. I shot it so early. Of course I did here, I'll show you what it looks like. Of course. Um, you can also, if you play with the mu the game music on, you can actually use the music timing. It's like right when the last note plays of this little song. Wow, that was like the worst spread I've ever... Jesus. That was horrible. I, I can't go out like that. <laughs> that was so bad. You can kill basically all of them with two fireballs, but mess it up like that, then you're gonna spend a lot of time doing cleanup, which... I'm gonna have so much more Geo than I'm supposed to because I keep killing Gro's mother and getting the 50. But that Geo is important. Much better. If only one survives, two quick hits, and you can get out of there. Alright, so now we're going to do the shade skip. Again, this is something... Well, first we're going to talk to her. Um, you want to use two buttons. I use uh, nail and, and jump um, as my two buttons. To spam through text, it's way faster than spamming one button. Press down three times by Sean and Stone. Um, uh, as soon as this closes, you want to dash left. Right here, I dash right and press up when I'm passing the bench. Some people just walk. Whatever. Alright, so now... Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> but I'm trying to show easy little things that, like, I overthink them, I guess. Alright, so I would do that. You're not going to equip Shaman Stone yet, but you're going to try to get two hits on these guys. You want to try to hit them on the left side so they knock you to the left. If you mess up like I did on the first one and he knocks you to the right, you lose a little bit of time. You want to get to Sly as soon as you can. I press up on the D-pad and then bam. And as soon as it's done, I dash out. So, when you come out of this room, you can get lucky like this, and this guy will be right here, which is good. You want to dash over him and hit on the right side again to knock you to the right. You're trying to die here, so you want to try to get these hits as fast as you can. That was really good. Now, this little platform thing, I'm pretty sure right here, like where that lines up, is the barrier. Because if you die to the left of it, it'll put your soul or your shade in the Gruz Mother arena. If you do the right, it'll put it right here, which is where you need. So you want to make sure, even if these guys are like all the way over here, you have to wait for them to come past this thing or this won't work. So after it's dead, um, you can actually, as he's killing you, you can pull up the inventory. I don't do it. Um, I just, because it takes a while for the knight to wake up anyway. So you don't lose any time doing it this way. Other runners, I see a lot of them do. You open up the inventory right before the last hit, and then right as you die, you open it again, and it'll just stay up throughout the whole black screen death. Um, and you can just put your cursor right on top of Shaman Stone. I'm I just don't do it. I have no reason why I do or don't. Um, but like I said, it takes a second for the knight to wake up anyway, so you don't really lose any time. So once you spawn, what I'm gonna do, there's two ways you can do this the shade skip as far as the the two nail hits that you need to kill him. Basically. If you're on the same x-axis, right, yeah, x-axis, as the shade, um, the same horizontal, or the same height, whatever, then it, every second that you are, it gives him, like, more of a chance to fireball. He can shoot a fireball at you, which is annoying, and it wastes time, and sometimes can mess up your positioning and just ruin everything. So, when you, I'm going to dash over to that platform, and you have to hit him once, and then dash back up here. You can either hit him straight up, which knocks him to the left, which actually wastes time because he has to fly all, all the way to the, over to the right. But when you do that, it gives him less of a chance to fireball because it just, like, the way it works. Um, I do the up slash so that I save time, but I have a little bit more of a chance of, of getting the fireball. So, up slash. Now, what I do is I dash once up here, then I jump, basically a full jump, and I dash up against this wall. 
and I do two tiny jumps against the wall, and then I let myself slide down to the bottom. Then I jump back up to the top, jump off, dash, pogo him, and get up. Now, all of my movements on this platform are dictating where he is. And basically, you want him, like, right here, so you can dash off, pogo, and get up. So... There you go. Um, it's not like, like this is one of those things where there's a thousand ways to do it. Um, it's just whatever you feel most comfortable with. I found that when I do the whole like this, slide down, jump back up, this, it kind of puts him in the, the exact spot I want and I'm able to get up there. Um, but it just kind of whatever method you do to minimize the, the chance that he'll fireball and to get him in the right spot to where you can dash and jump up. Um, Blue Lake is literally nothing. It's just dashing across. So I'm going to fly across because I'm lazy. Because debug is nice. So you would just, basically in the water, you would just keep doing this. You would go all the way across. So, and then once... What? That was weird. Um, and then once you do that, you jump... And, uh, dash over. So then, you're going to dash twice, jump up here, wall jump, dash over and hit that. And you want to try to stand to the left and jump, like, as soon as it's gone. Timing thing. Alright, so this, this is actually important. So, this Dream Nail platform has a pretty solid chance to softlock you if you mess up. Um... Basically, if you press up to interact with it while your character is still falling or like still in the dash animation or coming out of the dash and haven't touched the ground fully, like you want him to be actually like on the ground walking before you press up or basically when the like little explosion thing happens and like the dreamer is about to appear, you'll, your character is just going to be falling infinite, infinitely and you can't progress. You soft lock. So I dash, 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 and then I dash and then I let myself land take like two steps and then press up <laughs> i'm gonna rely really hard if it ends up still soft locking me but um basically i mean i've seen people like actually get to this platform and then stand there for a couple seconds this i, I have dream i'm an idiot <laughs> when you use debug mode you have to turn off dream nail or the game is like no you already have it you can't i've done that a hundred times so anyway i've seen people on that platform like like jump around and stand there for a couple seconds and then press up and it still soft locked them. But if I do it that way, exactly the way I just did, I've never soft locked. Like I just dash up on that platform, take one or two steps and then interact. And it normally works. Like I said, I'm gonna laugh when it soft locks me still. Okay, that, that little like boom is where your character would basically be like in an infinite falling animation off the ground and these guys would never appear and you can't like, can't keep going. It'll just screw you. So you just spam through all that text and then once you get onto this platform right now there are two things you can do um one of them saves one second in in-game time because it pauses the timer basically you're waiting for the seer to spawn right now what you do for it's like to to get a lower in-game time is as soon as you're able to dash an inventory drop off and your pot the timer will pause right here and then it'll start up again, and the seer will show up one second earlier on the in-game time. But you'll lose uh, one game of real or one second of real time. All right, now this these dream nail platforms again is something that's a little bit different for everybody, but um, it's one of the the most underpracticed things in the whole run because it's just it's like it's kind of insignificant. You know, the way to do it optimally is probably two seconds faster than every you know bad way, but. Um, it's it's still a good uh it's a good thing to practice the way i do it is right when the seer starts flying off i know i can jump up dash over to this platform and hit the side of it even if it hasn't actually showed up yet the hitbox is there so like this see you're able to jump off it like as soon as as soon as seer starts starts moving so then i do it again and now once i'm on this platform i jump and i dash and i try to land as early on this platform as i can because I'm trying to get two dashes off here. And if you if I start my first dash like right here, I actually won't get both off and I'll just dash off. And so like the whole point of this area is to be moving right as much as possible and fitting as many dashes as you can into this whole section. 
Because the more dashes you have, the obviously the faster it'd be. So I jump. And then basically I just do the platforms like this. I already know where they're gonna be, obviously. They're always in the same spots. I actually used to do this a different way that had one less dash than the current world record holder at the time, fast at CC. Um, and I saw that even if, even though I got to the dream world before him, I still ended up losing time, like a half a second to him. And I was wondering why I could never beat his gold. And then I went and looked and he actually got one more dash than I did. So that's why I relearned this whole area so I could have the same amount of dashes and uh, ended up getting a faster dream nail segment than him, if I remember right, or it's close. So... Then you want to talk to, to the seer, span through the text, and then walk up and pick up the dream now. So, I'm only going to be able to show this once, so I have to kind of explain it quickly. But, once this text is gone, I'm going to spam pause as fast as I can. And I'll, I'll stop once I actually do pause. It might not work because I heard her start her ah, bullshit. So, but if you do it correctly, if you press pause fast enough. So... Basically, you're in a room, and the screen transitions on the right side of the room. And, I, dude, DT, I know I'm so mad that I didn't think about it before this. But when you pull up this uh, this menu, you want to be holding right because the the instant that the the you close the menu by either hitting continue or by pressing start again or pressing you know B or circle or whatever, you want to be holding right and you want to instantly start a dash and just. I spam it, you can time it if you want, but just you want to get two dashes off as fast as possible because you can get out of this room before it would actually like come out of white screen. So I'm going to hold right. I got it. I 100% got it. Okay, so if you did it too slow, you'll actually wake up inside the room and it'll take you like five seconds and you actually can't move that whole time. It, it might not be five. It might be like three seconds, whatever. It's still annoying. Um, if you did it decent but not good enough you'll actually be standing up at the spot which is a little bit different um than if you do th this is the right way if you're still sliding and you haven't started wa waking up at all then you did it basically perfectly or as well as you could so when you're in this little like this you're like you know laying down animation for some reason the game makes you fall like you have the inventory open so you don't actually have to open i don't even know if i can open the inventory i think you can't actually um, because you're going to get to this right here and you're going to fall the way to the, to the ground on purpose. But you don't have to, if you're in the sliding thing, you don't have to actually open the inventory. You'll just fall at like full speed. But it is very, very, very important for, um, if you are in the slide thing, once you get to this, this edge and you get off of it, turn around, face left. Because if you don't and you fall to the, the ground all the way facing right, hit the ground and then dash to the left out of the room, the little save icon will never actually show up, which means when you get to Lurian and you kill Lurian, once the white screen happens after that, it'll just stay white screen. And you'll basically you'll basically soft lock, and you have to quit and um, and re or like re come in, which wastes like a little bit of time, not a ton, but it's a couple seconds. It's really annoying. So we figured out that because you net like once I turn around, my character is actually going to start standing up, which means I'll get the save icon before I get out of the room, which will prevent that soft lock. Um, if you're doing the, if you got the decent one and you're actually wait, like standing up during this, you do have to inventory drop here and you don't have to turn around because I'm pretty sure the save icon shows up like instantly anyway. So I can't dash for some reason. What? Oh, okay. I guess that's what happens if you pause there. All right. Fun fact. Don't pause. Um, now I can't show. Okay. Normally you're able to dash and you would dash left and then turn around and inventory drop. Or you, you wouldn't inventory drop if you're sliding. Sorry. You would just drop, but you want to turn left because it's important. So anyways, I guess whenever you pause while doing that, you just keep sliding and you can't do anything about it. So you just dash cross. This part's not important. Um, you get, I think, three dashes and then you dash inventory drop. Okay, so this next room after this one, or after the elevator, sorry, is actually slightly different how I do it. And I'll explain why I do it that way and how to do it the correct way. I'll show both. Okay, so the point of this next room is to gather souls as soon as you get in the room. Then you want to, on the certain level that has the, the Wanderer's Journal on it, you want to get over the two enemies, a third one spawns, and you fireball left twice 
because you want to kill both it kills all three of them did i oh, i didn't quit <laughs> i couldn't remember you fireball left twice which will kill all three of them and then you pick up the wander's journal and then you dash left and pick up all the geo right well after you do that then you go around and you go to the bottom level and most runners will go to the very right side of the the, the bottom floor fireball left twice and or no sorry once and then if it doesn't double hit the big guy then they have to hit him twice with the nail but they'll get all that geo i don't do that for a couple reasons the main one being when you fireball too close to a wall i know it there's a lot of like graphics happening right here but even if something's standing right in front of you the fireball actually doesn't it's not happening at all it's actually not gonna hit anything no matter how close they are to you if this animation happens where it looks like it's hitting nothing that means that the wall ate your fireball and that's that only happens with vengeful spirit it doesn't happen with shade soul but none of these are actually would do any damage so the problem is the guys on the bottom floor are random and if one or two of them especially the big guy is up against the glass you can't like wedge yourself up against the glass and shoot a fireball left it won't the fireball won't work so you have to waste a bunch of time like getting to the left and like trying to nail or to the right of them trying to nail left move them over and then fireball i hate all of that i hate that floor i hate that there's any category that i have to do it this category i found a way around it so i don't have to because the geo is a lot more lenient in this than it is in true ending and true ending you absolutely need that geo so i have to get it but um in this category there are other places i pick up geo um to compensate for that and even then when you're short geo in this category really it just means after hera you have to break this one geo rock and get like nine geo which is not a big deal for me but that also means in this next room i kill the flying guy because most people get like two or three nail hits on him anyway and it takes five to kill him and he drops 12 geo so i thought okay if i'm not going to get any of the geo from the very bottom floor i might as well get one or two extra hits on this guy to get the soul and then pick up as much geo as i can that he drops ideally all 12 to kind of make up for it a little bit but that's just one of the things that i do that not every runner does um so you would dash in here pogo pogo and then this is the flying guy that i kill so i got all 12 that's perfect so ideally he continues to move away from you so if you stay underneath him just to the right then he'll actually just stay in this little spot i kind of messed up and went too far left which made him start going right he just continually goes away from you in the, the the direction that you're not so ideally you could just stand here and just hit five times but i messed it up anyways um that gave me all the extra soul i wanted and five hits which is perfect so basically do i have infinite soul in? i don't think i do unfortunately okay so whoops normally i wouldn't have full soul i'd have like um seven hits uh one two yeah seven so basically right here um you want to go down one level and you're gonna these are the three guys you're gonna kill and you're gonna get the the wander journal some runners hit this lever and then go under because you can make it there before the elevator and the point is that they want to do a sharper drop and go under um on the two floors down i don't because i just i i don't really care about going around the elevator so you come in here now that that big guy can either do a jump or he can do a charge the charge is free you just go over him the jump he, like like you just saw you can actually get over him without um without getting hit if you jump correctly and pogo correctly and all that um it's possible to get hit there it's not the end of the world but basically in this room you want to try to take zero damage because if you can that means you don't have to bench in king station unless you're scared about dying to watch knights then have to bench in king station otherwise you could soft lock at uh it's not really a soft lock but kind of soft lock you, you'll lose all your geo and it'll take forever to get it all back so there's no point in continuing the run really but anyways um I really, really try to take no damage in this split. This is one of the most important splits to do optimally because of how different, how big of a difference it is between doing it well and doing it not well. Um, not only do you have Watcher Knights that are really difficult to do quickly, um, even for the top runners, uh, we don't always have like a really, really good Watcher Knight fight. So getting to that room earlier is really important. So I'm gonna try to take zero damage in this room. So, okay, this is exactly... So, I don't know where these guys are at the bottom, right? They could be all the way over here at this glass, and which is really annoying. So, I don't kill them. 
But what I do is I drop down right here and right here, I dash right when I'm under it, right? Now, if the big guy is here, the window is super, super tight. You can barely get over him. If the big guy is underneath this thing, I actually don't know if I can get over him without getting hit. Like I basically dash and if there's a guy right underneath me, I pogo and dash again. We'll see where they are. Perfect. I can do that every time. So that was really easy. Uh, a lot of runners will drop down, like I said, go to the, the window and fireball left, which will kill all these guys. But I don't want to deal with any of that. So they drop a lot of Geo, to be fair. Like, it's it's really good to get that. But <clears throat> I don't like dealing with the, the randomness of whether or not they'll be up against the glass. So you want to dash three times here. And what you're going to want to do... Okay, so you have to get up here, right? Which means you're going to wall jump here. Now, one thing that I will say is that this wall is actually not like a straight line. It's actually kind of a C. Well, like straight, C, straight, right? This middle area like doesn't have a hitbox. It actually won't let you jump if I can get to it. it it's like really weird. So what I do is I jump off the very bottom. I have to try to remember how I do it without overthinking it. So I jump jump off the very bottom i go over to the right but then i come back over left and i line myself up right here and then i stop holding left or right and i only hold down and i'll pogo once which will hit the very edge of this first spike so you do that now i didn't even press down or up whatever maybe i barely did um i was gonna try to show the thing that i don't do but that a lot of people do so when you get up here you're gonna pogo dash pogo dash if you dash into like the very corner this little slope and press up basically <coughs> it'll pick up the relic but you'll be sliding forward which i see a lot of runners do i don't know how much time it saves if any but um it kind of lets you like move to the right while you're in the animation of picking it up so maybe it saves something but now this is important because um, not that, but this next part, because if you got hit in that previous room, right, then if, if I got hit once, then I won't do this. If I got hit two or three, two or more times, I will, unless I got hit four times and I only have one health and <laughs> you can't do it. It is faster. I'm pretty sure to just inventory off or I'm sorry, dash off inventory into these spikes and it'll spawn you where that toll is. And then you can bench. If I'm not going to bench anyway, then I just do this. And I'm pretty sure, um, I've been told that it's only worth dropping into those spikes if you're going to binge. Maybe if you have full health and you're willing to leave this room with only four health, um, you can actually get back up to five later. I I'm comfortable doing launch rights with four health, kind of comfortable doing it with three, so even then. Um, but all of your health and soul throughout this whole split is so important because... Basically, you, you waste time if you don't go up there with enough soul. Um, you waste time if you have to stop to heal, obviously. There are two opportunities to heal. One of them basically makes sure you have to dream down the Watcher Knights before the fight because you want to start the fight with full full soul. The other one um, affects your soul and you would actually... Like, one of them you can do and it... Like, you won't have to dream down them, basically. I'll explain once I get there. But I, I just, you know, get down like that. And free thanks for the host. Okay, so this guy can be in two different spots. Now, I've seen people do this, and I'm pretty sure that's faster because you end up having to go to the right. But I'll, I'll show you what I do if he's close. If he's close. All right, perfect. That. That's all you have to do. You just dash off here. Pogo. I did forward. Pogo. Can I? There we go. <laughs> it's like I can do it when he's actually there. But, um... I'll show the full room if you are right, perfect. So basically, if you do that, your last dash, whoops, your last dash will go too far. So you have to turn around and wall jump off the top of that. Um, it's not very difficult. It looks harder than it is. And it's slightly slower if he's to, far to the left like this, because you have to do, you don't actually get a dash and then you have to like, Stop moving left a little bit so you can jump up here. Also, one thing to note is that some of these, the bottom of this thing is like finicky. It won't actually like let you jump sometimes. It's not all of them. They're working now. I don't know. Oh. 
Uh, there's one in the resting grounds that's really bad, but you don't have to worry about it in this category. So anyways, I would have less soul. Um, so now we're going to go do Gorgeous Husk. Okay, so these two guys can actually be in different spots, right? This dude actually jumps at a really sharp angle, like more than you would think. So if you dash off and then dash, he can actually be right here, which is perfect because you can pogo him and dash again. And then the, even the second guy can be in a perfect spot to pogo him. And I, actually, I'll try to get it. Let's see if I can get him in the right spot. And then I'll show what happens if he's to the left like he just was. So you dash. Oh, perfect. That's that's amazing. That's perfect. And then you would just do that. Dash and go in. Um, I'll try to show what happens if he's over to the left like he was. If he will cooperate. So dash, dash, dash. Okay, so you... Like I said, it's, it's sharper than you think. I stop moving left so that I can stop, jump straight up, and then pogo and start holding left and dash over. Um, I messed it up right there. Wow, that was really late. I expect him to, like, come at me way sooner. Anyways, but yeah, I, I will stop, like, before I get too close. Because if I get too close, even if I jump, he jumps at such a sharp angle that it'll make him run into me anyway, so. And then... On the first one I showed, if he's over to the right, like I want him to be, he's cooperated every time so far. Let's see if he does it again. Um, no. <laughs> so this little guy, once you jump, you have to make a decision because he can either run to the left or run to the right. If he runs to the left, then you can actually pogo right there and you'll have another dash so you can make this gap. If you gamble on that and do that and he runs to the right, then you'll actually just fall off like I just did a second ago. So you have to, if you are gonna try to pogo him and he's gonna start running, you have to react to whether he goes left or right. See, right there. <laughs> I'm doing it too slow, but basically you would, uh, because he ran left, that would be perfect because that means I could pogo and then just dash over. All right, so normally I would have three hits coming into this room. Because I don't, you need three hits to, to fireball. You're gonna fireball this whole line. If you don't have the three hits and you have two, which I normally always do, um, depending on what that little guy did on that previous platform, then I'll walk up and nail once and then fireball. If they're far enough right, I'll dash nail fireball. But um, sometimes the fireball will double hit the big guy and kill him. Sometimes it won't. If it doesn't, you have to hit him twice with the nail. If it does, then you could just... It didn't, so you have to nail twice. Okay, so here's Gorgeous Husk. So... I see people mess this up a lot, and I know the fix for most of them. So the, the basic premise is you want to nail once forward, then nail once upwards as you walk under him. So it's like, actually, I'm gonna, I'll show in this room real quick. So you wanna up like that. I mean, I'm trying to like simulate him knocking me backwards from the forward, but you, you see what I mean. But the one thing I see them do is after the back hit, if if you let's see if I can explain this right here. So after that, as soon as you do the last backwards nail hit to knock him away from you, you want to not walk that direction at all. Because if you walk toward him after the nail hit, even like slightly, you'll be too close to him and it won't double hit the nail. And it actually the way that it kind of works with Gorgeous Husk is it kind of sets up for all of them to single hit. But just because of the timing of like how the fight goes. So if you like when you do the back hit, you want to stop moving completely. And it'll actually knock him far enough to where he will uh I can't respawn him, so See, I'm like stop moving as soon as I get that last nail hit. If that makes sense as soon as you do the third one you want to like let go of, of whatever left right you're holding and fireball immediately and also you want to try to fireball as soon as you're able to after the nail hit because he'll be moving away from you from the nail hit which will cause him to be like have the momentum to be pushed forward by the nail by, by the fireball to where a little double hit it takes that combo of three nails double hit fireball it takes four of them now, if you come into this room, I see some people do the thing where when they're in this tunnel, if they have the soul, they'll fireball to knock him to the right so that they can come in the room, dash, and then start the, the rotation. 
But um, I don't. If he's just close, then I just do that, that, that fireball, and then I start from here. Which, which will mean I'm one fireball short of him dying after I get the full rotation thing off. Um, like, I'll, after I get the next three. So then I'll just run up and, like, nail, you know... You can nail four times, you can nail fireball, you can do whatever you want. <clears throat> um, but the point is to try to get through this area without being hit and with as much soul as possible. Alright, so once I get out of this room, you just want to try to fit in as many dashes as you can. The way I do it is I dash, dash, and then right when I am, like, even with this little slope, I dash to, like kind of stop me just a little bit because I want to hit this platform if that makes sense I'll show you what I mean so I do that and then I dash to hit that and I can barely catch the edge of that which means I can land here dash and then I get another dash in the air um I guess I'll quickly say it for those who don't know you get one dash in the air but if your dash started on land and then you're in the air then you get another dash and then obviously pogos give you another dash well if you actually bounce up and none of those bounce you but if you poke an enemy or an ob obstacle that actually like makes you go upwards, you get another dash. Um, so anyways, basically you want to get through this next room with getting as much soul as you can. And you have to go straight across the bottom to get to the left to open up the lever in the next room. So... That was kind of slow. I, I played safe. I could have tried to go for... All right, so in this situation, I've been hit once, which means this elevator is the is the only time where, okay, so I actually have to go forward a little bit to explain. When you get to Watcher Knights, you wanna have at least eight out of nine hits, right? Because you're gonna break a ceiling and the fastest way to do that is with a fireball. So that'll put you at five out of, out of nine. And if you're at eight out of nine um, and you go down to five, then you don't have to, to dream nail before you start the fight because you're going to dream nail the first watcher knight as he spawns and then the first thing you do is going to be a, a nail so you'll go from five you'll dream nail go to eight and then you'll hit him with the nail before a fireball anyway so you'll be at nine you'll be at full soul so it's basically the same thing as being at full so this fire or this um elevator is the last time where you can heal once especially if you're at high soul if you're at low soul and you only like have three out of nine then it's going to be really rough for you but the point is to be at high soul that way you can heal once it doesn't waste any time because you have to ride the elevator anyway and um you still have enemies above you that you can get soul hits off of and not waste that much time so i would probably heal here i s <laughs> of course i messed it up i send the the elevator back down for later all right so then you pogo off that go up here if you miss that pogo it's still possible <laughs> <laughs> of course I miss it. It's still possible to do it off the other one, but it's a little bit harder because you gotta kind of S, S, like, your way up. I'll try to do it. I'm gonna try to break the first one and then I'll... I would have had it. I actually didn't trust that I would have had it, but I would have had it. That's fine. I'll show it. <laughs> of course. I'm not very good at doing the backup because the, 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 the regular one's not that difficult. You, normally you just... Ugh. And then you go up, but there you go. Then you dash, dash. I try to get a hit on him every time. Sometimes he doesn't co <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't cooperate. So, okay. This is another one of those times where all of your movements dictate what the guys up top will do. I don't know if the hundred percent consistent if you like test it every time, which you can't test this game, but if you did the exact same pixel perfect frame perfect inputs every time if they would always do the same thing i think there's still an element of random to it but i'm not 100 percent sure but you can very much influence what they'll do based off of your movement so the way i do this room is right when i'm i mean i'm a little bit too far already but right when i'm past right here i jump dash pogo and then i'll dash and try to hit the very like this spot the, the very top Barely jump off and then get onto the platform. That'll make sure that I, I... There's two flying guys up here. And I'll aggro them pretty separately. Which means... I'm going to be doing what's called a, a lever skip. Where you hit the lever through the floor. And the best thing that I want... I want the one that ends up on the left. I think it's the one that is initially right. But I think they swap. The one that's, that's going to be on the left. I want him to try to like dash at me. And like, 
like nail me or sword me, whatever. Um, because that means I can kind of jump through them and then they're out of my way. So I'll, I'll try to see if I get it. I kind of messed up actually a lot. No, oh, yeah, I, I messed that up really badly here. I'll show what I mean. I didn't actually jump on the platform. It's going to be weird because the lever is going to be already used, like broken, but I'll just pretend like it's not. And this is important because you want to not get hit in this room. It's actually pretty bad to get hit in this room. See, that's bad. See, he threw a, a javelin, which means he's kind of in my way, but you can get around like that. And, like, it's slightly slower. If he jumps at you, you can kind of, like, hit the lever. I have to do it backwards for you guys. You jump up, hit the lever, and then you jump in between them. And then you can just go in and, like, he's completely out of your way. Or you go this way. Whatever. Um, he's completely out of your way, is the point. Um, but because he kind of threw a javelin at me, it, like, ruined it. Because, like, they're in a weird position. And sometimes that flying... I didn't know he was in here with me. Um, let me just get out of here so that he gets out of my way so I can say what I'm trying to say. Uh, like, sometimes he'll actually go into the dark room like that. And it'll kind of just throw everything off. Um... Especially if he's like right at the entrance and it's really annoying. So I'll explain how I do this dark room. Um, normally I'd be at full health right now. I'm trying to explain something. And anyways, so this dark room is. It only happens like this because you hit the lever through the floor. You didn't actually come in this room the way that you were supposed to. So the game doesn't even really understand like why you're here. So it doesn't light up the room for you. So the way I do it. I really, really wish I had input input display on right now. I'm mad I don't, but whatever. Is I'm going to, like, as soon as I'm, like, right here-ish, like, right when you get into the darkness, I dash, and there's a wall like this and a wall like this, right? So there's a pit right here. So I dash, and I hit this wall. I jump over, and I dash up. And as soon as I'm done with this dash, I jump this way for you. I jump diagonally, and as soon as I land, because there's an elevated platform up here, so I jump, I mean, it's over here, but I'll, I have to show you. Here. Oops. So once I'm right here, <laughs> I'm like right here, I guess, I jump diagonally, and as soon as I land, I stop holding right, and I jump straight up, because there's a platform I brought right here, and the gap's right here. So I jump diagonally, as soon as I stop, like, as soon as I know I've landed on the platform and I'm, like, I hear my feet hit the ground or whatever, I jump straight up, if that makes sense. So, easy. Now, I'll show you the backup in case you mess it up. It's really simple. There's a lot of lenience. Like, you don't think that there is. But let's say I mess it up, right? And I don't know where I am and whatever. I dash all the way to the right. It probably takes two dashes. I just, like, do three just to 100% be sure. If you're up against the right wall like I am, and... All you have to do is jump and press left, and then as soon as you land, again, stop holding left and just press jump. That's it. It's just one jump this way. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's hard to do backwards for the camera, but it's basically just one jump and then straight up, and it's simple. So I'm up against the right wall. Easy. Now, you want to end up on this side, so if you can, when you do this, if you're confident that you got it, which I normally am because this is really simple. I jump left and then I jump and press right, like to where I'm not going to move too far to the right, but I'll turn around that way I get over on this side. So anyways, this is your last opportunity to get soul, right? And I should have six out of nine, but I pressed fucking circle a second ago. So I accidentally shot one, but normally I'd have six out of nine. So I want two hits on this guy right now. I want, um, five. <clears throat> so, the way I do it, and you can only get five off them. The way I do it is I jump, I wall jump all the way to the, basically the top, because that'll make him come upwards, which is what I want. And then I'll jump off and dash underneath him. So basically I make him go up. There you go. Um, and you can't heal here, otherwise you won't have eight out of nine, which is what you need. I mean, if you're not confident and you know, like if you're not full health and you're you know not confident about this fight you can always heal um it doesn't make that big of a difference because you're gonna lose like one to one and a half seconds by uh by dream nailing the watch nights which i'll show you in a second so okay so this ceiling is the one you're gonna break now 
one thing I will point out is that when you have just Vengeful Spirit, you want to jump up and you want to hit it right in the corner. Like, you're touching the wall and the ceiling right in the corner, and it'll break it. If you have Shade Soul, for some reason that doesn't work, and you want to do it like... Hard to control. Basically right here, like way, way lower, to where it looks like it like wouldn't even hit. But for some reason, if you do it in the corner when you have Shade Soul, it just won't break. I mean, sometimes it will, but it's like a really, really low chance. So just easy. You come over here, nail it three times. All right, so I have five out of nine soul, which is perfect. That's all I want. It's like the max. If you have five out of nine, or if you just want to start the fight with not full soul, which is not advised, then you can just go ahead and start the fight, which is the fastest way, like, which is what I try to do every time. It's like a big thing for me. And the fight starts about right here, like almost right where this last Watcher Knight spawns. But these two in the background, you can actually dream down them or soul. So if you could, even if you came in like up here with three out of nine and you fireball that thing and now you have zero, all you'd have to do is that and now you have six out of nine because you're hitting both. So you would be perfectly fine. I just don't like to waste the time on having to dream nail them, so I don't. Now, hold on, I'm gonna put a dream gate over here so I can show this fight multiple times. And I didn't binge at King Station. Okay, so let me explain real quick that if you die this fight, right, then your shade gets left behind in this arena. If you didn't bench in King Station, that means the last time you benched was in Salubra. But to get above, or was that Salubra's hut? Which means if you want to get above her again, you have to do a shade skip, which means you have to kill yourself again, which means you didn't get to kill this shade, which means you lose all your geo. So that's why, especially like in races, even though I'm like very, very confident in my Watcher Knights fight, there's always that chance where they'll just give you a really, really bad pattern and you'll just die and then you're just stuck at Salubra. And there's no way, I mean, I have 650 geo. That's not a small amount of geo. It would just, you would just be so screwed. So if you're not confident that you'll 100% always kill the Watcher Knights or if you're like, you know, unless you're going for world record attempts or whatever, you want to bench a King Station, which works out because that room before it, it's pretty easy to get hit, you know, some of the time. Um, so it ends up just working out. So just binge accusation if, if that way you can at least continue. If you die to Watcher Knights, you can just run back up here real fast. So anyways, um, I'll probably just do a full fight and then I'll show you, um, or I'll try to explain stuff afterwards. You want to start? Okay, my nail didn't come out. That's interesting. So, I guess it's a good time to pause. <laughs> I messed up on the nail at the very beginning. That's interesting. Basically, I'm, I'm holding toward him, and I'm expecting my nail to push me away from him so that I don't walk into him. But because my nail didn't come out, I was just holding toward him and walked into him. <clears throat> so, um, the whole thing you want to be focused on is when they roll without bouncing, you can jump straight over them and shoot a fireball, which gives which makes it... Either double or triple hit, ideally triple hit, obviously. That's 60 damage. That's a ton of damage. Your nail does five. So triple hits are the most efficient way of doing damage to them because you can hit them while they're rolling with spells. Now, if, um, if, like, let's say right now, right? I'm, oh, I'm going to get sold in a second by dream nailing and then three nail hits. But basically, if, uh, you, you never really want to go down to zero soul unless you're absolutely positive you're about to get soul. So right there, I knew that the nail that the triple fireball hit was most likely going to kill him. I'd already done a lot of damage. So I was okay with doing that because I'm going to dream nail this guy anyway and I'm going to get soul. But going down to zero soul in this fight is really, really risky um, because there's always a chance where they could do a roll and you're missing out on all that damage. Now I don't have enough soul, so I couldn't triple hit, which actually probably would have killed him. Alright, hold on. Before I continue, I have two things I want to say. So one thing is 
the main point once you get past the first watch night is you almost always want your fireballs to hit both. It's so important to hit both because it's just maximizing your amount of damage you can do to the two watch nights. Also, you want to make sure to avoid what I just did where I ran out of soul and then the other one rolled away from me. Now I have to dash across the entire arena to get back to him and he's going to die way staggered from the other one. Which means the last one's not going to spawn. Which means I have to attack this guy solo. All my fireballs that I shoot at him are not going to hit the other one. So it's it's important to try to make the, the second and third die at the same time. That way the fourth and fifth spawn near each other. Um, on top of that, what happened at the very beginning of the fight was... Um, oh my god, my, my mind like This is why I paused because I wanted to... Oh, okay. So let's say this one had just rolled... He wasn't dead. Let's say he just rolled across the arena, right? And I'm attacking this guy, I nail, I nail, I go over him, and I fireball to hit both, right? Now, when he turns around, there's a good chance he's going to swing at me, which, which makes me want to nail, nail, pogo, and dash over. But there's a chance that the one off screen can either roll or he can bounce roll at me. Now, if I am about to, like, it, the timing works out to where if I am on this side of him, right? Um, right whenever I know he's about to either roll or, or bounce, then... There's a chance that when I do the forward, forward, down, and dash over, I'll dash right into his bounce. If he's rolling, it's perfect. That's what I want. Because then I'll have soul, and I can, like, I'll dash over, and I can either double or triple fireball on the way over. But I'm taking that risk every time that there's two of them alive. There's not right now. But I'm taking that chance every time that he won't be bouncing. Which is why, like, if you ask me if I was confident in this fight, I'll say yes. But if, you're, if like, I had one health... I'm not confident because I can't do the fight as optimally as I want without taking risks. I have to take risks. I have to do that like that optimal damage rotation and hope that he rolls instead of bouncing. <laughs> so I went over to the right side of him so that I could uh, so I could hit both of the fireball. Now I have no soul, which is not good. Have no soul again. Okay. That's decent. So yeah, it, it's it's just it's all about risk versus reward. Um and so like just because I got hit in a fight doesn't mean that the fight went poorly. Like you can still get hit. I mean some of my best watch night fights I still took one or two damage. Um it's all about managing that risk and once i get down to one or two health then maybe i'll stop going for that and i'll just like go for the slightly slower version of whatever i wanted to do that way i'll, I'll live at least okay so right there normally my damage rotation is like nail 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 and then fireball like i mean as you can see but for example at the very end of that, he can only do the slashing three times in a row. Other, and then after that, every time he'll do something else. He'll either roll away or he'll um, bounce. So right there, right after the last one, instead of shooting, sorry, shooting the fireball like I normally would, I nailed three times and then dashed over just so I'd have soul right now. I kind of hesitated on what I wanted to do there. He's dead. So I expended my soul right there because I knew there was a pretty good chance that I was going to be able to get three hits on him. Anyway, see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Right there, I took the chance that he wouldn't be bouncing, and he ended up bouncing. So, But they died close together, so I'll take that risk. That's fine. I'm at three health. I'm still fine. Ah, uh, I didn't expect him to do that. So when they come down from bouncing, there's a pretty good chance they're just going to stand there for a second, so I know I can at least get three hits. So it's like, you only want to go down to no soul if you know you're going to get hits after. I'm surprised he's not dead. There we go. Um, 
So yeah, if if I notice that one's about to like stop bouncing right in front of me, then I know I'm gonna have time to get extra soul, which means that it's fine to like to run out. I know I'm gonna have enough for in a second. So it's all about like it. You have to manage it, and you have to understand the risks you're taking. Kind of just gonna continue doing the fight just so I can keep explaining things that don't always happen in every fight. That's really bad. Oh, he was one nail hit away. Having to dash across the entire arena like that is actually annoying. Is he alive? really anything else I wanted to talk about so you're gonna end up getting this geo and that relic um, as far as I know if you don't have super dash which you don't in this category then it's the same um, then it's the same like speed to get it before or after um, dream nailing Lurian so it doesn't really matter uh, you send the elevator back down and you climb yourself because it's faster than the elevator. <clears throat> now, in this category, you don't have Crystal Heart coming here. So the fastest way to get across, I just jump and dash and try to land right here so I can get a dash off on this platform. Getting out of this room is pretty straightforward. But one thing to remember, which I can't believe how many times I've messed this up, is you have to hit this lever. And then you want to go right into this window, inventory drop. Basically do that. It all That's just timing of like a thousand times of doing that that I remember how or like what when to close the inventory. So you want to try to get as much of this geo as you can, ideally all of it. Now, one thing to remember is like I hit it, then I dash over to the edge and then dash jump into this but make sure to clear both corners i've seen so much geo be left by somebody just like doing this but like it can there can be so much stacked on top of each other in the corner i've seen people miss like almost 100. so <clears throat> i i go to the corner dash clear both corners and then once i jump out of this i kind of like hit this corner dash over and then come grab this And you want to try to inventory drop right over this ledge so that you miss that little platform. Not a big deal if you don't. And then I go to that little, this little black strip right here to inventory drop. Now, unfortunately, sometimes this big guy with the shield can be standing literally right here. And it's actually so obnoxious because I think... If you drop down and you dash, like this whole little thing right here doesn't really have a hitbox, I'm pretty sure. Um, but if he's standing in the doorway, there's a very, very, very small window that you can dash over him if he's just standing there. Once you fall, like if you try and mess up and dash into him and get hurt, then he'll kind of like crouch down to swing at you and then you can jump over and dash over him. But I mean, it's just obnoxious for no reason. Like it, it's just really, really unlucky if he's standing there. All right, so this room doesn't really matter um, other than you can do a thing called gate storage. You can actually do it in a lot of other spots that I've already like kind of glossed over because it, it saves next to nothing. But um, basically, 
this one specifically, you're gonna hit this, and then once the gate is actively moving, you wanna be up here, and you wanna dash into the wall while holding to the left. And it like, and then don't dash again until you hit the ground. That's important because you'll accidentally dash the wrong direction. Um, even if you're holding left, it'll dash you right because it thinks you're on a wall. So, like that. I that one it wasn't even very good. If you do it a little bit better, you'll actually go farther, faster. But in this room, I dash and then dash right here. Hit that lever, and then you want to hit this lever so that the elevator goes past you. And then inventory drop in here. Now, because we did Watcher Knights first, we didn't used to. This Lim's actually not in his shop. We have to hit that, go down here. We actually have to go talk to Lim um, out in front of this fountain. Whoops. Master's text. Pretty simple. Somehow he teleports back to his room before we can get there. Then you're gonna sell all your relics. You're gonna read chat while you're spamming. <laughs> then you're gonna accidentally talk to him an extra time because you're used to true ending. Yeah, then you dash over here. Kind of hit that, that slope so that it pushes you to the ground faster so you can get dashed more. I always just kind of assume because you can't see it because the like the screen is black right there. I always just assume that they're going to be right where I'm going to land, so I pogo or I just downslash just in case. Uh, I sent this elevator back down right here because otherwise you'll fall into the little gap where it normally is. Um, I try to collect as much soul in that room as I can, three or four hits. Um, then. Basically, I want soul for the next split or for the next section. Okay, so this jump is not very important. It says it's probably two seconds at most, but um, it's good for a couple reasons. A, it does save a little bit of time. B, it allows you to hit that big guy up there. So before, when I talked about the rooms where I wanted to get a dash before the platform ended, like I would stop and like let myself, you know, come to a complete stop and then dash and jump. But this platform is actually long enough. And if you do that, you actually will jump too early. So it all comes down to just getting used to the timing. You basically have to jump to where you're gonna, uh, or dash to where you're gonna jump off nothing like that. If you saw, I literally jumped, like my character jumped like here. I'm not even on the platform anymore, but um, it just comes to, it comes down to knowing like the timing of walking forward and doing that. And you can do this. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes that happens where he's in a weird spot. I'll dash here. Whoops. And then instead of, I'll do that and I'll miss. So it's it's generally, in my opinion, smarter to just do this. But. <clears throat> All right, so this is the first instance of the, the scurry look down. For some reason, when you talk to these tolls normally, you pay the toll and then the toll goes into the ground and then it waits like almost i think it's like three seconds or something ridiculous um i'm not gonna be able to see it because i'm gonna do it hopefully correctly but and then the bell will pop up now this works for the tolls where there's like a gate or whatever um the ones where you actually pay with geo not the lever ones where as soon as i press yes uh to like pay the toll um, i'm gonna use the right analog stick you can do it with like anything you know with a keyboard you can just look down um the timing is a little weird for me so i just use like basically i press it now and he looks down but i press the right stick now and he does it instantly so it's different but i use the, the right joystick um so as soon as i press yes i'm gonna look down for it's probably half a second to a second at most and it's gonna make the bell pop up like three times faster so watch and the bell pops up almost instantly. Uh, it's gonna make the gate go down on the way to Crystal Peak uh, basically instantly. Also a trick for the stag stations, um, in any percent NMG, every single time you take a stag, press down once and that's where you're supposed to go. Every single time. It works on every stag you take in this category. You press down once and that's where you're supposed to go. So you wanna come up here, jump off that wall, hit the lever, walk out. Now, 
You can take this bench before or after buying the lantern. I always just do it before. Important to keep it consistent if you have a lantern split like I do. So come here, buy the lantern, spam, circle, or B, or whatever. And then I just dash three times and press up. This is all pretty simple. Then again, press down once and you go to crossroads. That's where you're supposed to go. Alright, so this room is pretty... I, I'm actually going to have to walk back out because the tick ticks around cycles and I need one of them to be in a certain spot. So, Or I need them to not be in a certain spot, I should say. So basically, the way I do this is always consistent except for the second to last infected binge fly up top. Sometimes if he's really far to the right, he'll be so far out of the way that you don't have to um, you don't have to get hit by him. But I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around the range of like 80 to 90% of the time, he's going to be in the way and you're going to get hit by him. And that's on purpose if he's in the right spot. So this one right here, most time. Oh, wow. He wasn't in the right spot, but I avoided him. So, of course. I'm actually going to give myself infinite health so I can do this over and over. But um, it's kind of rare for him to be out of the way like that. Um, most of the time he's in the way. So all that's always consistent. But then, yeah, then like that, you want to get hit by him, kind of damage tank through and go over him. So here's another instance of the toll. Um, normally, when you just, if you do nothing but pay the toll... The toll will go down, and then it'll wait like three seconds, and the gate will go down. Now, I discovered a long, long time ago, and I told Fireborn that I needed to heal at this part at one point. So, um, I just realized I have full health instead of four. Whatever, it's not a big deal. I told him that I healed here once, and instead of the gate, or the toll going down and the gate going down, they both went down at the same time, and I saved like a second or two. Now, because I brought that up, Babai and Scurry went and looked up that instead of healing to get them both to go down at the same time, if you look down, this was the original, this toll right here was the reason that we looked into this. And if you look down, instead of them going down at the same time, the gate actually goes down first, even before the toll. So it saves like three seconds instead of like a second and a half. So if I do it right, let's see, the gate goes down way earlier. So, I normally just pogo off him. He could be to the right, and you just jump and pogo off him again. I, I'll, sh I'll show it, or I'll talk about it because I've never done it. I think you can dash, like, at this height and pogo off of this thing to keep going up. I, I don't do it, but I know a lot of people do. Oops. I don't really know how they do it. Maybe they do this? Whatever. I don't do it. Okay, so this this crystal dude can either be to the left or to the right. And if you're facing the way he's not at, then you can just continue to go... See, if he's on that side with me, I have to go around. But if he's on the... Like, if he's going the, the correct way uh, away from you, then you can just... It saves, like... Probably a second. <laughs> He's following me. Alright, we're gonna look left again. Don't do this to me. Wow! We're just gonna keep looking left. Eventually he'll go right, right? There we go. Jesus. Okay, so... When I said earlier in that crystal... Or in that uh, City of Tears room that I don't kill the guys at the bottom because I get extra geo that not everybody else does. A lot of people, most runners will damage tank through this guy because you can't really go over him and he's kind of in the way. I collect soul on the way here on purpose so that instead of damage tanking through them, I just fireball two quick times, which is maybe moderately slower. I don't know if it's been timed, but it's, it's very, very minimal if anything. And also I get the geo from him even if I don't slow down for it, I still get at least some. So, so at least I got five. It's better than nothing, and now I have... Well, I would have four health because I got hit on the way up here, but you get my point. 
Uh. So, there's another way to get up here that I'll mention. If you accidentally dash and you fall into this hole, or you can do, you can come over here and come up here and try to get the, the pogo on this pickaxe. Which just introduces more RNG into the run, so that's why I'm not a fan of it. And I can't do it anyway. Whoa! Okay, there you go. There's a stupid pickaxe pogo. <sighs> Introduces a ton of RNG 20 minutes into the run. It's not worth it. Nobody goes for it. There you go. There's pickaxe pogo. So anyways, in this room, there's actually a cycle you can make. And it requires, like... A really really tight jump I'll see if I make the cycle so there you go that's uh, God cycle slash God pixel whatever basically if you get there fast enough and this guy is on this side and he's shooting to the left this little circle the very very center of it actually doesn't have um, doesn't have a hitbox so you can if you get here fast enough he's there you can jump straight through that little circle and it, it uh, doesn't damage you Otherwise, you can just wait for the other one to go around, and, uh... So you want to make that cycle, getting before him. Um, it's pretty simple. You basically just do exactly what I just did. There's not really another way to do that besides, like, messing it up and damage tanking. So there's two more... Strats that I don't necessarily go for, but, um... One of them saves a minimal amount of time. Actually, they both kind of save a minimal amount of time, if anything. I'm actually going to Dream Gate right here, so I can... One of them's called the Homothity Fireball. Um, there's also two other ways to do it. But I don't go for any of them, but I'll show you what they are. But here's Homothity Fireball. And I even messed it up, but whatever. So, basically... You dash off that platform and make sure you're on the platform um, so that you get another dash in the air. But normally you would fall after the dash, which means that you're going to be too low to actually get to the platform. You can do it without a fireball, but it's a little bit more difficult. Um, but it's called the Mothity Fireball. Basically, you're just using the fireball to stall in midair to where you don't fall. There you go. There's a Mothity Fireball. Now... I'm going to reset again just to show this, but there's two ways to do this this part. I'll show you the damage tank method, and then I'll show you the no damage tank method. Um, the damage tank method is... is I actually... I've never seen any numbers on which one is faster, because you have to slow down to a little bit to get the no damage tank method, but then you don't have to waste time getting hit. So I think it ends up balancing out. This is the normal way to go here if you don't have soul or don't want to do the Trinomi grab. So that's the damage tank method, and it lets you get on this cycle, where you can basically just, like, run through this like you normally would, and you only have to slow down right here, and then you can go under this platform if you really want to. Um, you can go over it too, but because you dashed off of that platform, you can dash in between the platform and the spikes. So I'll show you the no damage tank method. The way I do it, there's a lot of different ways, but basically it all comes down to the whole room... The cycle doesn't start at the same time. It starts when you get close enough to each spot. So basically, you want the first half to like start, and then the second half to not start yet. That way, it it's like you don't have to get hit, but the second half it's still in the right spot. So I jump up once, dash over, dash over, and then these move out of the way like exactly when I get to them. And now I'm on the cycle for this part. That's another platform. So that's Crystal Heart. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways to to stall at the beginning of that section. That way the lasers are, are lined up correctly to where you don't have to take damage. But that's just the way I do it. I jump once on the bottom of that conveyor belt. And then I ride the left one up. And then I ride the right one up. And then I dash over. So it's like I slowed down just a little bit. I keep forgetting I have to do this. There's two other ways to do that 
um, Homothity Fireball part. One's called the um, the Tri Grab or the Trinomi Grab, um, and the other one's like the Homothity Fireball with no ball, so the Homo Ball with no ball, so the Homo. But um, I don't go for either, and I, I don't really know either. But none of them save more than like 0.2 seconds, so it's not a big deal. So after you get Crystal Heart, spawn on the bench. And then now it's never been determined 100% why, but the Crawlid, the Crawlid, I think it's Crawlid, it's Crawlid or Tick Tick, whatever. At the end of this room will sometimes be in a spot, like you're always going to hit him, but sometimes you'll actually get hit by him and he'll stop your Crystal Heart. The way I avoid that is I come down here and I walk to right before this pole before I start my C dash and I don't get hit. You'll just go right through them. No one's really been able to explain why. Oh, wait, let me explain this room. But sometimes they'll hit you, sometimes you won't. So this room is one of the most random in the whole run, if not the whole, like the whole split, if not the whole run. These infected grozers are sometimes just in your way, right? Like right here no one's there sometimes like that first dash he'll just literally be in your face and you'll get hit and there's nothing you can do about it they're being nice right now <laughs> i dashed into him um but basically sometimes they just you just get screwed and uh so the point is to make a cycle i'll show the cycle real fast oh see that's exactly what i'm talking about sometimes they're just there and there's not much you can do uh, i'm just gonna turn on infinite health so the, the best part, or the, the best cycle you can make is you go here and you inventory drop down the center. But if you get hit at all in the very beginning, you actually won't make that cycle. So what you want to do, I'll try to, I'll try to show myself, like, I'll get hit by this first tick tick on purpose. That way I'm on the, the wrong cycle. So I uh, see I got hit. You want to go over to the left and crystal drop or uh, inventory drop, crystal drop. You want to inventory drop because let's say I got hit once right at the very beginning you will get onto a cycle where this guy will be in your way and then this guy will be in your way it actually just ruins everything oh no I'm sorry not those this this one first so you get hit up here and you might get past this guy but then this this one is like directly on the side of the platform so you'll get hit by him and this one's on the side of the platform it just lines up I'm getting hit all over the place I hate this room so if if you make the cycle correctly like this then you're fine. If you get hit once, you want to go down the left side. Because they'll be out of the way. Alright. So right here, you just crystal dash. Stop it right here. Dash over. Alright. Here is the first acid skip. That's basically it. I'm going to kill this guy so that I can, um, I can explain stuff without him messing with me. So, you dash in, I normally up slash him, and then I land here. You can do it from here, but I find it way, 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 way easier to do from this little platform. So I dash, and then I stand here, and basically just walk off, and start a crystal dash. And then you jump off. Now, if you, um, if you start a crystal dash too high, which I can try to do, which is actually kind of difficult, you'll actually hit your... I'm like messing it up because I'm trying to do it wrong. I, I can't even get it. But you can actually hit the that little like... You can hit this. If you're just like way too high on this wall, you'll hit this and it'll stop you. And I think you can dash and barely grab this wall and jump up if you're really fast about it. But you, you got to do it like perfectly. Otherwise, you're just going to fall into the acid. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if you can get that off. I think you can. But anyways, so yeah, you just... <laughs> I don't. You just walk off this platform. I started it too late. Oh, wait. Am I too high? Wow, that, even that wasn't too high. See, it's actually kind of hard to get it to be too high, but like, yeah. Anyways, fall down in here. There's a couple different ways to do this room, but I'll show how I do it. Um, I think we timed all of them, and I think the way that I do it was either the fastest or the second fastest, but basically, 
<laughs> Why did I jump? I just jumped for no reason. I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> Alright, so I just dash and then hold left a little bit, inventory drop. Walk off, inventory drop. Dash, dash. Basically. Alright, so this room, you can get here and start a crystal dash. I don't because there's like a 50-50 chance that one of these jellyfish will actually hit you and stop you. And you'll get hit and waste time and waste one health. So it's just not really worth it, in my opinion. I just dash and then get up slashes on those jellyfishes. So you in, you in the crystal dash above that door, inventory drop, walk in the door. Oh, wait, why am I dashing? Jesus. Yeah, you would inventory drop, press up. And then as soon as you're in here, start a crystal dash. Now, you really don't need full soul. You don't even really need six out of nine. You can basically just have like three out of nine and be fine. If he's too low, you'll get hit by him, which is annoying. Um, because you can you can dream now Umu as soon as Umu spawns. I'm gonna set a dream gate here. I should have benched. Yeah, we're actually gonna Just in case. All right, so I'll try to explain Umu as best as I can. There's a lot of RNG uh, RNG elements to this fight. So I went. Oh, I'm still no clipped. Whoops. Whoa. Wait, I wasn't no clipped. I'm so confused. Um. Or I pressed the wrong button. Whatever. So there's a lot of RNG elements to this boss. But, okay. I'm going to try to explain them all and explain the two cycle versus the three cycle on what you have to do. So, keep in mind that the way that I set up Umu is not always the correct way. I've seen a lot of different, like, positionings of yourself. Because where you position yourself in the arena determines where Umu will go. Um, not 100%, but, like, the general direction. And you want Umu to be in the middle platform in order to get the knockback from your moves to be really, really minimal to where you can get off a certain damage rotation. And that damage rotation does exactly um, 150 damage, and Umu has 300 health. So if you do it twice perfectly, you can get exactly 300 damage done, and you'll get what's called a two-cycle which saves anywhere between 15 to 25 seconds, depending on the slow or fast moves you got, etc., etc. Um, but it's not always possible, and there's a lot of RNG elements. So, Umu has two abilities. Um, Umu can either do a fast attack, which is just spawns a bunch of lightnings around the room all at the same time, and they all kind of, like you know, activate near the same time that they're not synchronized 100%, but they're, you know, really close. Or it'll do a lightning attack that just puts eight electricity things following your movement, like where you were like one second ago or whatever. And that's the slower attack is when you don't want as much. Now, in the first phase, when Umu first spawns, it, it's always attack and then floats at you, attack and then floats at you, attack and then floats at you. And if uh, every time Umu floats at you, it has a chance to move fast or slow, and the fast one goes farther. So even if you do the same movements in the room every single time, Umu won't always be positioned in the exact same spot because sometimes it'll float at you fast, sometimes it'll float at you slow, and the positioning will be weird. So you, you have to kind of adjust what you do to, based on what Umu does and if it floats at you fast and slow. Also on top of that, in the first phase, Umu can do either three or four attacks. So if you do the positioning perfectly after three attacks, then... Umu would be in the right spot after the third one, but sometimes you'll get a fourth attack and you'll have to try to adjust and it's, it's kind of difficult. So I'm probably gonna show this fight a couple times um, and try to see how many of the RNG elements I can actually show because they're all, you know, it can be pretty drastically different. But um, I'll at least show the damage rotation at least once um, and hopefully I'll be able to show a two cycle. I'm not very consistent with it. Um, it's one of the main reasons I don't like this category anymore, but so just drop into here. Once I get up here, I count zero Mississippi, one Mississippi, two. All right, so I go right here for the first phase. I got the fast attack. Then I go about right here. 
This is the slow attack. It's eight lightning things, so if you want to count them, sometimes it's important to know exactly when they're going to stop. Here's another slow attack. This would be not great. Uh, one thing to note is that Umu cannot do, in the first phase, can't do three of the same attacks. So you can't get insanely lucky and get three of the fast attacks, because then you're guaranteed to get a fourth. It won't give you just three. As far as I know, that's what I've been told. I've never seen it, and I've done this fight a bajillion times, so I'm pretty sure that's the case, but... Um, I'm not even sure you can't get the same three attacks uh, in the first phase. So I go right here. Normally I dash down here to get Umu a little bit lower. Alright, so this is good. Um, Umu's in the right spot. You want Umu to be basically to where this orange part is like just touching the, the platform. Because Umu's going to get stuck in this platform for the majority of this uh, damage rotation. And it's going to be... Fireball, nail, or I'm sorry, fireball, nail, nail, fireball, nail, nail, fireball, nail, nail, and then double fireball. And that's important because that allows us to get, if the soul works out perfectly to go from full to zero with the max amount of damage we can do in that rotation. And if Umu gets knocked backwards because he's not in the platform, you actually can't continue your rotation. He, he, he gets knocked back too far and you can't do it correctly. So that's the reason why you need Umu to be positioned in this platform. Um... Because basically you start full soul, you fireball, go to uh, 6 out of 9. Nail, nail, go to 8 out of 9. Fireball, 5 out of 9. Uh, nail, nail, 7 out of 9. Fireball, 4 out of 9. Nail, nail, go to 6. And then double fireball. And one of the two last fire or fireballs at the end has to double hit. Because that does 60 damage instead of 40. Otherwise you'll be 20 short. Um, so one of the two last fireballs you shoot, Umu has to be off the platform and gets pushed over and one of the fireballs will double hit. There's a chance, actually, I don't know if Vigil Spirit can do the double-double, like to where both of the last two fireballs double hit. It wouldn't really matter that much other than making two cycle really easy. I think I've heard somebody did it, but um, it's a lot more common with, it's not very common at all, but it's more common with Shade Soul. <clears throat> so anyways, I'll see if I can get the damage rotation right here. And of course the second fireball didn't double hit, so Umu has 170 health, Instead of 150, I'll continue the fight, but just know I can't get the two cycle now. I, I actually can't do it. It won't, like, I can't get the, that damage off in the second um, rotation. You, you want to try to get three Dream Nails? While positioning Umu in the right spot for another. Um, and, of course, Umu did three attacks instead of two. Again, it didn't double hit, but I at least got the damage rotation off. So, um, I'll actually just Dream Nail out of here. So yeah, that was, I did the damage rotation correctly both times, but Umu was slightly positioned wrong, and... If you have any sort of like delay on your attacks, like if you don't do the rotation quick enough, sometimes Umu just won't get pushed backwards enough and um, and the second fireball or the first fireball won't, like neither of them will double hit, like what happened. It's also somewhat, it seems fr somewhat frame dependent, but, or frame rate dependent, sorry. So, got the slow attack. Got the slow attack again, that would be really bad. I mean, not really bad, but bad. Obviously, you want as many fast attacks as you can. Also, Umu's really high. I could get a fourth attack. I did. If Umu flies at you really fast like that, that means there's no chance you're going to get a three attack. You're going to get a fourth one. And it seems like if Umu doesn't travel far enough in any given, given cycle, it will always do an extra attack. It's like... It needs to travel far enough to um, to get like to the next phase in the first place. So I'm gonna get a fourth attack. You can still salvage it, but it's a lot harder. I'm gonna try to salvage it here. Uh, it was too high. There's no way. So the reason that that's so difficult to set up is because. Whenever Umu is going to, um, whenever Umu is going to get broken open by Quirrell after that fourth attack, 
it's random whether Quirrell will actually show up and, and break Umu open within um, in two seconds or four seconds. Like, anywhere between two to four seconds. Um, and so, you can do that the same way every time, and sometimes Umu will have too much time and it'll float upwards and end up being too high, which is what happened right there. I wasn't able to actually um, do the rotation because Umu was too high. It seems like whenever Umu is too high in this phase, if I don't get Umu to come down low enough, then I almost always get the four cycle. That that should be low enough. We'll see. Not a hundred percent, but yeah, it's low enough. There we go. That's perfect for whoops. I'm gonna get a third attack, almost guaranteed. I actually I can't really do it now. I'm screwed. Yeah, I don't have enough soul. Yeah, you have to get the three dream nails off um, before Umu is vulnerable, or else you won't actually be able to. Uh, you won't actually be able to do the damage rotation. It, it depends on you starting with nine out of nine, and there's no other way to do it. So, I. Like I said, Umu can float at you either fast or slow, and Umu is kind of far, so I kind of expected Umu to float at me faster, and didn't. So my first Dream Nail missed, and I wasn't able to get a third one in. There's a lot that can go wrong in this fight, and when you're trying to get, you know, a world record run, it's almost required. It's not it's not required, but it's pretty close. Um, or it'd be very, very difficult to get a world record without getting two cycle. And this is pretty commonly known as a run killer. Unless your name is Time Sink and you get two cycles every time. Because he's the Jellyfish Whisper. Alright, I got the double hit. Should be good unless I get a third attack. I did. This could still work, actually. And there's two seconds. So, because I got a third attack, I had to kind of, like, coax Umu into coming up to get more into the platform. But, there you go. There's two cycle. So, you come down here, crystal dash off here. I completely messed up what I normally do there, because I... It's hard to do things when you overthink them. So yeah, this is all pretty, you know. But the run's about to get pretty complicated. Because this next split is, uh... Or two splits for me, but... Some people don't split in the middle like I do. Um, it's basically the most complicated and most difficult part of the run. <sighs> Unless you, I mean, Watcher Knights themselves are up there, but not counting bosses, it's the most difficult part. So, I have to mention that there is a slightly slower way to do this next split. And when I say slightly, I mean, if you do the faster way perfectly, it's 40 seconds faster than the slower way perfectly. Now, the slower way is a thousand times easier and more consistent, you can basically get it every time, but it is 40 seconds, it's a good chunk of time. So I'm not gonna be going into the slower way. Um, it's not really like any optim, or not much optimizing, it's just go through deep nest. But the faster route goes uh, goes through uh, Queen's Garden. I also just realized I didn't like explain anything I'm doing here. Nothing to here was generally exciting. Uh, so I dash once, jump four times if I can press jump. Jump, jump. Crystal dash off here. I try to get six hits in this room. Oops.
So I try to stop my crystal dash right early because like I want to be able to hit the board as early and I can hit the like I can walk left while hitting it. I used to hit this guy, but then he started hitting me, so I just hit those two. So here, here's QGA. Um, it's the most difficult trick in this run. Um, pretty, that's pretty agreed upon. I don't think anything else is even really half as difficult as this. Learning it takes a lot of uh, practice, but the general, the gist of it is, you want to get onto this like that and crystal dash, dash off. You don't have to jump off the platform. That's just the way I do it. Uh, I know Time Sync walks off and dashes right um, to get on the platform or to, to get on the wall. I think Scurry does that as well. Um, there's a lot of different ways, but as long as you get onto this wall without sliding before starting the crystal dash, you want to start the crystal dash almost as soon as you're like physically on the wall. Um, I try to line it up to where my eyes are uh, just above the water. Like the bottom of my eyes are touching the water like they are right now. Um, you can either slam into the wall on the other side or you can end it early and jump off the wall, but you have to end it like as late as you can without slamming into it to get off. <laughs> of course I messed it up, but there you go. There's QGA. So I know we, you can do something like that. I'm not good at that. Not at all. Um, I jump. And you can slam into the wall or you can, um, you can end it early if you do it correctly. But it's, I find it a little bit more inconsistent when you end it early. I press jump and it didn't go off, so I just tried to do it. There we go. It still works. It's just preference. It takes a ton of practice to get this correct. Um, and nobody's really 100% consistent with it. Most top runners are somewhere in the range of... 90 to 95%. Uh, that might be high. Um, at least 80 to 95 at the very most. Um, it's a pretty difficult trick, but not really much to explain as far as... There you go. So then you can either crystal dash right here or you can just dash. Now, crystal dash, I hit him once because I wasn't at full soul. Stop right here, jump up, crystal dash off this wall. So then I'm going to stop before I hit him. All right, so here's the QG arena. Normally you don't stop right here, but I, I want to explain. There's going to be three Mantis Petras. Um, they each die to two fireball hits or one fireball hit and four nail hits. Um, they have about 80 health. It might be like 78 or something, but I'm pretty sure it's 80. Um, on this patch, I know they buff their health later, but the point, or the, the the main way to do this is to kill the first Mantis Petra with only one fireball, so that you still have six out of nine, and you have to have it double hit. And the way I do that is to slam into the wall, jump off as soon as I can, and then wait till the Mantis Petra is moving away from me to fire the fireball, which makes it double hit. Um, and then the second two. There's a lot of different ways because obviously you have two fireballs left. You can just fire both. I mean, you're going to fire both, but you can have them both hit both Petras and kill them both. But sometimes they don't always line up that way. And um, like in my 3411 uh, PB, it like, I don't think I hit either of them with two fireballs. They both double hit on separate fireballs. It's just the way you do it is different. I'm going to show the first Mantis a couple times just to, to show you what it's supposed to look like. And then I'll... But that's what it's supposed to look like. I'm going to leave before I kill them. Because I can't get them to respawn without restarting this whole split. Do I have infinite soul? So. Basically, you want to slam. There's another way of doing this, but this is the way I do it. You slam into the, you slam into the wall, then you jump off the wall instead of doing what I just did. So I kind of wait for the mantis to be moving away from me. Because if you shoot it too early, then it will uh, it'll only single hit. Also, the Mantis has a very small chance of spawning like with his back to the platform. And it's a very low chance. And if you do this 100% correctly, I'm pretty sure it can almost always succeed. But every once in a while, I get one where it felt like I did the right thing. And he just his back is to the side of that little platform. And he won't get moved backwards. So it doesn't double hit. Now, 
I'm actually going to do it the whole arena right here. Uh, we'll see if I do it correctly, but I only get one shot to show this if I do it right and they both die. So I jump off this wall. Oh my god, okay, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and... <laughs> I accidentally hit my head on the ceiling. So basically what I do is I jump on the wall above the gate and I kind of come from above. And then I shoot the fireball when the very bottom of the fireball is going to hit the very top of the, the close Petra. And that kind of works out to where, like, my fireballs will hit both. And I missed the, the far one. See... That was actually, I don't know if I could have had it right there. I was going to fall. That's one of those ones where I'm not sure if I could have double hit him. I might have been up to with slight adjustment, but. There we go. There we go. That's how I do that. Okay, so after I get done with the Mantis Arena, I do, Jesus. I do this, wall grab, wall grab, jump over, and then I just walk off. And that puts you here. Everybody does that a little bit differently, but that's the way I do it. You can also go through this room going above, but I like getting... Oh, I would have zero soul. I would also have four health, so... You're going to have four health. If you do this whole split correctly, you're going to have four health. Um, you don't have time to heal. And on top of that, uh, why do I... What? Interesting. Um... You're gonna have four health because you just had the damage warp in those spikes and you have no soul so what i do is i come down here hit him once hit him twice if i don't miss so this room is really annoying and it can go a lot of different ways so it just you have to kind of react to where these mantises are sometimes they're much more in the way right now they're pretty out of the way so that's good all right and you can crystal dash in this room but um there's a good chance that that petra will hit you with a a uh, little shuriken thing. So you want to try to get as close to these thorns as you can, if you can get closer to them like I just did. Eh, that was too far. Okay, here. I'll just... There you go. You can inventory drop straight to the bottom. If you don't want to risk it and not get close enough, it wastes a minimal amount of time to just... Whoops. Actually... Um, it wastes a minimal amount of time to just like do this and then adjust and fall. Not a big deal. So now we have Deep Nest. This is how I do this room. Dash and well, you don't have to hit that ledge, but I did. And I want more soul. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot right now. I think I lost more from trying to adjust earlier because you dash twice and just crystal dash off now i don't have full soul but i would hit him twice because you need full soul coming into this next area Do i have oh i have 97 whatever it is. um so you want to end that early, just find a way to get up these platforms that's safe. It's not worth trying to save the half a second of doing them better and accidentally messing up and falling because you'll just basically kill your whole run. Um, get in here, you want to crystal dash, sit on the bench. Now, beast in, in an ideal situation, any ideal run, you'll see runners come in here with full soul and uh, four out of five health. Um, it's just not worth to waste all that time healing when you only really need three health in this area because you have to take two well to do it quickly you have to take two damage um and i'll show you why in a second so you have one health of uh leniency to accidentally hit a spider so i'll show you the right way to kill these devouts i can't really respond to them so i only have one chance to show you but basically you're going to damage tank to get through them if you don't have the health or don't want to risk it you can also just do it the slower way where I'm gonna fireball three times, go up to him, wait for him to open, and then nail hit twice, and then dash into him, because it's not his claws that's hitting me, it's his actual body making contact, which only does one damage instead of two. 
So I'm going to nail twice, dash into him. Then while I'm invincible, I'm going to nail, nail, fireball. And that'll, that'll kill him and allow me to only take one damage. You have to go through two devouts this way. So, um, although I think the top one, you can do some weird thing to get over him or something. Or maybe it's this one. I think you can get over him if he doesn't do something. I, I don't know the strat. I don't do it. Um, and I think even Homothity, who was talking about it, said even he doesn't go for it because it's, it's pretty risky. And this is really late into the run. So um if you want instead of dashing into him you can get the two nail hits dash away then go back up to him wait for him to open nail twice and then dash away again in fireball or if you're feeling risky you can nail fireball nail but you have to do it really quickly and as soon as he opens his mask otherwise he'll hit you with his claws and actually do two damage so it end up screwing you so wait for him to open Then I normally slide on that wall to see where this guy is. All right, now I normally kill him because I'm, like I said, I'm short on Geo more than most runners. And I kill this guy because this guy's the most dangerous one of the whole, um, the whole beast in. Because if you get hit by him up here, then he'll hit you and then you'll get knocked into the spikes. And like, you're just you're one health here and you're screwed you're actually just screwed so you're gonna lose a shit ton of time because you're either gonna have to heal and hope you don't get hit by anything else and also make up all that soul to get to the top devout with two health and full soul to do the correct rotation or you're gonna have to do the top devout like you're gonna have to play risky avoid all those spiders without getting hit once because you have one health and then do the the devout at the top the slow way because you can't damage tank one so I, I just kill him for the extra soul or for the extra um, geo and because he's he's risky because he's next to those spikes. So you have to get past these two spiders, which I'm not very good at. You can take one damage uh, to these spiders throughout all of Beaston, and normally it ends up for me it ends up being that third one, which it was right there. Um, either the third or fourth or sometimes both if I'm not playing well. Um, but basically when I try to go past them, I try to. If they're going down, I try to like jump off and pogo to get above him. Um, oh, also, when you go by that grub, you have to turn to the right and nail once to save the grub, or else your run doesn't count. Um, okay, so then you come here, you have two, uh, you have two health, full soul, so you can damage tank him. If you can't, I'll actually show the like what would happen if I only had one health, right? It's actually, I'm just gonna turn on infinite health just in case I mess up the last part and end up taking two health. I don't want to have to go through this whole thing again, so. So you wait. Oh wait, I'm so dumb. I completely forgot I was supposed to dash away from him. All right, I'll do it on this guy so I can show. Uh, wait. So you would do this. Wait for him to open. Dash away, and then right here you would do nail fire. Press fireball, but it didn't go off. You would do nail fireball and nail, and you can get it off before the the claw hits you. But it's very very tight timing. Of course I messed it up, but <laughs> but you get the point. So, um, basically, right here, I have way more uh, Geo than I should. I should not have 408. Um, you'll most likely have around 250 if you did the Geo the way everyone else does. I normally have somewhere around 230 to 240 um, because I skipped that bottom City of Tears room. So, I get the Geo in the right side of this room after finishing Hera, which wastes at max two seconds. I don't even think it's a full two seconds if you do it right, but um, I think it's worth it to not go for that bottom uh, City of Tears room and like have to deal with the RNG of them being up against the glass and just take and have the chance of being 10 Geo short right here and having to get this Geo catch, which is, like I said, two seconds. So you just, and then you grab all the Geo. And that got me 28. And like I said, that wastes two seconds. So I think that I think it's worth because um, I don't like dealing with that bottom sea of tears room, but that's just me. Uh, when you go past that devout because it, it respawns, you want to wait for him to open his eyes on the mask and then nail as you're jumping over him, which will cause him to immediately open his mask and start trying to slash at you. Otherwise, if you don't do that or if you nail um, his mask too early, then he could back up and you'll end up falling into him, and you'll either have four health for. Hollow Knight, or you will have to bench either here or in the Black Egg Temple somewhere. Um, or waste the soul healing, which I shouldn't actually have soul right now. I should be at... Um, 
It should be zero. So. Uh, right here, you have to be careful. You don't like you have to grab the very bottom of this thing, otherwise you'll fall and basically a dead run. It waits like two minutes to get back up, maybe a minute if you're extremely fast, but I think it's two. So again, you want to look down to make the bell appear instantly. And again, the stag after talking to him, it's one down. Every single stag in this route is one down, and you get uh, and you go to the right spot. <clears throat> so, again, you want to jump off this. I kind of cut that close, but. Chris Dash right. Inventory drop in. Hope that you get Mender Bug. Be sad you didn't get it. Your run's not blessed. So, then you jump up here, Chris Dash off this wall. Then we have Hall Knight. All right, so in the Hall Knight fight, the main thing you want is you want him to do the dash attack at you because you can jump over him and you can fireball right above him in the direction that he's dashing and that'll make it double hit the hollow knight and that's you know uh 40 damage so it's really good the worst thing you can get is the parry because you have to either activate the parry and then jump over him or you have to just wait the parry out and it's the worst so i that was the dash but i accidentally uh i didn't get my second nail it didn't go off choking that's the worst when he does the dash he's gonna stagger at this after a certain amount of hits and sometimes your first fireball hit will just stagger him so then he'll just stop and then you won't actually get the double hit so there's the, the parry again there's a stagger on the first hit just really unfortunate There's a double hit. Uh, went over too fast. So, uh, when he's doing his self-stabbing right here, he actually, only every attack you do, whether it's a nail or a fireball, only does one damage. So, d keep in mind, if you don't need to heal or anything, just keep whacking away at him to get full soul and... What I'll do is I'll sneak one or two fireballs in between nail hits because all that one, all those ones are, yeah, it's only one damage, but it, it they're all going to add up eventually. You know, that you're going to get like nine or 10 damage in this phase. And on top of that, as long as you end it with full soul, then, you know, it doesn't matter. So I'll do that. So I still have full soul. That sucks. Now, you can kind of find a little safe haven right here. Sometimes you'll get hit if you are a little bit off. Okay, so that's... I, I would have went for it, but A, I'm only at 2 health. And B, he teleported because he was too far over the right. Or over to the left. But if he's in the middle of the stage, you kind of have to get a feel for it. But I knew it was coming right there. Once you do a certain amount of damage after that... Um, after the initial stab, like self-stabbing spot... He's going to do this scream, which freezes you in place for like three, three seconds or so, three or four seconds. If you jump and dash right on top of him, like directly on top of him in the very center, when the scream starts, you have to fall to the ground. If you're too high, he'll just move you left or right, whichever one you're closer to. But if you're directly on top of him, you'll fall into him, which will make you take damage, which will allow you to just keep hitting him during this phase and like it won't freeze you for three or four seconds. So... You're allowed to um, use, you can't inventory drop into him, but if you position yourself directly on top of him and get hit right when the scream starts, you can actually keep damaging him during this phase. See, I'm frozen right now, so I can't, but. 
That was the next one. And he's dead. Oh, I don't know why I didn't just no clip out of the room. Whatever. Um. So yeah, I'll I'll show it again. Um, I'll try to get Scream Skip to show how it works. Um. You want to you want to try to like not again. It's one of those fights where you want to try not to go to full to empty soul. Um, I spent a lot of time in that fight just now uh, at lower soul than I would have liked. I must. Oh no, because I ult. Wait. Yeah, I'm gonna be at Beeston. It's fine. I'll just uh, copy of save over. Come on. There we go. Oops. I have to restart the whole game because stupid UI thing. Ugh. If there's two things I regret is my controller input not showing and the fact that my debug is slightly messed up right now. Whatever. <clears throat> but keep in mind, I, I'm not the best at the Hollow Knight fight in the world, you know, there's a lot of people that have faster Hollow Knight fights than me. Mine are okay. Um, I can explain what you're supposed to do, but, uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm not the best at it. But I'll try to show what you're supposed to do. You want to try to get three hits quickly that way if he does the dash first then you can instantly double hit but didn't you would have done the dash right there that's fine oh one thing i want to point out about the parry when you activate the parry it like for the longest time i would press jump then nail and activate the parry and for some reason i thought that the game would make me stop going upwards right because like the screen kind of freezes right when you activate the parry but then eventually i found out if you just never let go of jump you'll continue on the upward tra trajectory and you can get over him while he's doing his counter attack um and not get hit so uh just keep that in mind it's one thing that i did for the longest time and didn't realize till later like that i just hold jump So you don't really want to scream skip that one because really you're not going to get anything out of it. You're just taking damage for no reason. So scream skip should be coming up. Ooh, uh, it's going to be after this 100% then. Dash a little bit late. Yeah. I have to sit on the bench to get my UI back. Right. How much soul do I have? Oh, I have an infinite soul.
Shot that one a little too high. I just wanted to see how many parries in a row I could get. Oh, expect that. So he's gonna do the scream soon. Soon. Could be after this. I'm not very good at scream skips sometimes. <laughs> of course, I'm not getting it, but that's the, the gist of the fight. Um, you want to try to to maximize, you know, DPS as much as possible by nail fireball, nail fireball, um, and dash in uh, just above him like just above his hitbox right when the screen's about to start it takes a lot of practice to get the feel of when he's going to do a scream um based on your damage that you've done but uh you can kind of get a good feel. like I, I knew it was coming um i just not getting the timing because i suck but <laughs> so yeah that's uh that's 80 percent nmg um thank you guys for watching um i'm gonna continue streaming and do some other stuff um, do some all skills runs, but that, yeah, that was an 80% MG. Thank you for watching.